Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight's video has been graciously sponsored by Skillshare. This amazing platform offers a variety of online classes on literally anything you can think of. And given the current situation that we're all going through, I think it is a really great time to just start learning anything you want. Brush up on an old skill, or maybe something that you might want to pick up. It's a great learning opportunity. Just go nuts. I personally have been practicing my poi thanks to Skillshare for the past few months with the help of Ben Drexler. He's a really awesome flow artist. And if you're into flow arts, seriously good. Check him out. The first 1000 people who click the link as the pin comment and in the description will get two months for free. That's plenty of time to binge on pretty much anything you want. So go nuts. Thanks guys. But for now it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. This happened very recently. My mother and I were driving down the road to the woods so that we could take our puppy for a walk and then post some letters in the village. When we were coming back, it was just starting to get dark but there was still a good deal of light, and I could see fine without my headlights on. For reference, I live on a hill in a very rural area, and as I was driving, I was coming towards my house, which is right on the bend of the road as you come up. There are two brick sheds on the left as you approach, which we use, which are across from the lane of my house. There is another lane that runs up the side of my house, which is straight on as you drive up the hill. I have to park a few yards away from my house due to the limited space. So when I come home, I turn right to pass my house, drive down to the barn and turn around and then drive back up to park besides the road so that my car is easier to get out of the space again. It's also important to note that these roads are very rarely used by anyone who isn't a neighbor, due to the fact that I live on a private estate, and neither of these roads actually lead anywhere. Anyway, I was driving up the hill with my mum, sitting with the dog in the back, as he's a puppy, and we hadn't got a cage for my car yet. I also had a bag full of logs in the boot for the wood stove. As we're coming up the hill, I see what I think is my stepdad walking from one of the sheds across the lane and to the house. When I see him, I mention to my mum that it might be better if she got out of the car right outside the house with the dog and ask my stepdad to take the logs out so that I don't have to carry it all the way up the lane to the house. But then, as we get to the house, we realize two things. One, my stepdad's car is not parked outside the house where it usually is, nor is it parked anywhere else down the lane. And two, we just saw my stepdad on the way home, finishing up some work he was doing for our landlord. So, who exactly was the person we just saw? As I'm driving down the lane to turn around and park as I usually do, I'm thinking about the person I saw, and I'm trying not to freak out. It was definitely a man. There was just something about his physique. Tall and lanky. And the way he walked, kind of like a swagger that just made it seem like it was a man and not a woman. He was wearing a black hoodie with the hood up, so I couldn't see his face, as well as a pair of camouflage trousers. This is not the kind of thing my stepdad would wear, not least because he actually doesn't even own any clothes like that. He's also not lanky and doesn't swagger, so it clearly could not have been him. Anyway, we get parked and walk up to the house with the dog and the wood, and then come to the door. The door is unlocked. At this point, my mother is getting very anxious, 
because even though she did not see the person, she is concerned because she definitely locked the door behind her. She is borderline paranoid about locking the door, even though we live in the back and beyond. So I believe she locked the door. So she thinks that we might have been mistaken, and for whatever reason, my stepdad got a lift home from work and unlocked the door himself. She opens the door and calls out his name, but there's no answer. She hears a bang coming from upstairs that sounded like something was falling off the bed. She tells me to use my key to lock the door, because now it seems someone is actually in the house. I locked the door and ran over to the tool shed to grab a hammer or something. I couldn't find the light switch, so I just grabbed the Stanley knife on the table and ran back with it. My mum told me not to use it, because I could get into trouble for using it on someone, even if they were burgling the house. But I was scared out of my wits, and had read far too many creepy stories, so I kept it in my hand regardless. My mum phoned my stepdad, and told him that there was someone in the house, and he effectively told her to stop panicking because it was unlikely. She explained that I saw someone walking out of our shed, and then she heard something upstairs. At first, he thought we had actually seen him, but he couldn't have returned by the time he got home, because we passed him near our landlord's house as we were driving back. He said not to worry, and that he would be back in a minute, and my mother hung up. As she unlocked the door, she told me to wait outside with the dog, and that she would go investigate. I followed her inside with the wood, and the dog, and the knife, and stood at the front of the stairs as she went to look up. I checked the cupboard and the corner of the dining area, and found nothing. Once she came downstairs and found nothing, we relaxed a bit, or she did. I was still freaked out, because I had no idea what I had just seen. I too went upstairs to double check. I looked under the beds and in the cupboards, but it was to no avail. I was still freaked out though. I definitely saw someone. So considering it wasn't my stepdad, there were only a few possibilities now. One of my neighbours came over, went into our shed, and disappeared into thin air. That must be the case, because they can't access it via their property on the road. I'd just driven down, and saw nobody. Or our other neighbour's son, who has schizophrenia. He used to be in the army, and also wears camo sometimes. And he has a history of wandering around our neighbour's yard, and following my neighbour around. Maybe he decided to go into our shed. This was later ruled out when my stepdad got back, because he told us that he knew my neighbour's son was now living in a home for the mentally ill just down the coast. Also, this neighbour's house is at the end of the same street I'd just driven down, so I would have seen him walking down the lane as I drove past to that neighbour's house, turned around, and drove back up to park, and I didn't see him or anyone else for that matter. The only explanation is that someone came looking for my stepdad, and then walked off somewhere we couldn't see. But I don't know, that'd be really weird. The only road used frequently is the one I drive down. The one other road, which was very rocky and unpaved, that leads to the barn, there's literally nothing at. So I don't know why anyone would go down there. Also, I could see right down this road when I was coming up the hill, and that person literally just disappeared behind my mum's car, where the front door is. As for the bang my mum heard, I honestly think that was just the cat jumping off my bed upstairs. But in the moment it was scary, because I'd also seen someone walking across the lane to the house, and the adrenaline was pumping. I really don't know what it was. I do know the figure was solid enough for me to think it was an actual person. I also know this isn't the first time we have seen and heard unexplainable things in our house. Two days after we moved in, my mum and I both heard what sounded like my voice downstairs saying, Oh, 
what? And we both thought that the other had said it. I don't sound like my mum at all, really. But when you hear a female voice, your brain kind of makes sense of it and assumes it's the only other person it could be, which in my case was my mum. It was only after I found out that it wasn't my mum that I thought back to the sound and realized it really sounded more like my own voice than hers. My mum has also seen a very solid looking cat, a totally different colored one to R2, walking up to the door as if it was going to go out the cat flap and then no cat flap sound. When she went to look, the cat was not there or outside and both our cats were still upstairs. She's also seen a small white dog appear out of nowhere and seemingly disappear and saw someone's arms pulling out the drawers of her dresser when she was outside looking into the bedroom window. She assumed it was my stepdad, only for him to tell her that he hadn't even got out of bed yet. What creeps me out about this one is that my stepdad's workmate has seen someone walking out of our shed before too. He came to pick him up for work one time and was waiting by the house when he saw what he thought was my stepdad come out of the shed, walk through the gates beside it and disappear behind the building. When my stepdad then walked out of the house, he was obviously pretty surprised. I've had many encounters with ghosts, but this is the first time I've seen a solid apparition in this place. Considering that the house is probably about four to 500 years old, I guess it's not that weird. Plus there's a story of a former resident who was a gameskeeper, having shot himself a few decades ago, which would explain some stuff like maybe the camo trousers. I'm not sure, but I'm really freaked out. When I moved into our current house, I was around eight. This was back in 05. I remember that we had this boring and very ugly front door. It was doubly annoying because the mechanism that locks the door in place was broken. You could continuously spin the doorknob in either direction and have it not open. So we took the mechanism out and you would just need to push or pull the door in order to get it open. Now, I was about to head upstairs when I noticed that the doorknob was spinning. I pulled open the door to see who was on the other side, and there was no one. I closed the door and was about to turn around again when the doorknob continued to spin. This was only possible if someone was manually turning it. I opened the door once more, and there was no one on the other side. I stared at it in wonder when the door flew off its hinges and pushed my head into the corner of the wall. It split my head open, and I had to stay for several days at the hospital for a severe concussion. I told my parents that I just fell while holding onto the door when they asked me about it, because I knew that they wouldn't have believed me anyway. We had to replace the whole door frame which we have today. Another story happened around four or five years later and involved my brother and I. Around when I was about 12, me and my brother were hanging out in the office room in our house. It was about 3 a.m. when we heard a bell. Not just any bell, but a tricycle bell. Just think of an average bike bell. We freaked the hell out because we were the only two in the house at the time. We looked around the house to not find a thing. The next night, I was alone in the office around the same time when I heard the small bell. I 
scared out of my mind, use my glass cup as a makeshift weapon to defend myself as I patrolled around the house. When I got to the kitchen, the tricycle that I had when I was eight, that we sold at a garage sale before we moved into the current house, rolled across the floor. No one was downstairs at the time to roll it, or ring the bell for that matter. We still have the tricycle somewhere. Another story. So my mother works a maximum security prison. There was an inmate that tried to hang himself. She was walking in on him, and she pulled him down and performed CPR. She ended up getting his heart to start again, but the damage was already done. The man was brain dead. This traumatized her pretty bad, and she got minor PTSD from it. It was bad enough that she needed therapy. Fast forward about a year or so after the event, stuff started happening around the house. Papers would come flying out of our printer. Objects would fall over on their shelves, and the TV would turn on and off at random times. These events escalated until one night my mother woke up with her arm in pain. She looks over, and her husband is laying on her arm. She says, Hey, wake up! You're on my arm. My stepfather nudges her arm some more. What the hell? Get off my arm! Now mind you, my mother had surgery on her arm in the past, and it's incredibly painful even to this day. So, she is in a lot of pain. She tries to push him off her, when she finally says, Get off my arm, you're hurting me! At this point, my stepfather opens his eyes and turns over so that all of his weight is pinning my mother's arm down. Except it wasn't my stepfather. This man had a tomato red face, black eyes, and a toothy smile that stretched to either ends of his face to his ear. Good. My mother proceeded to flip out and start crying to stop, and that she was terrified and to get off her arm. My mother eventually pries her arm out from under this intruder and runs downstairs. She wakes the kids up and takes them into the living room to prepare to call 911. My stepdad comes down to the living room, except he is himself. He is wondering what the hell is going on, and my mother is screaming, Get out of my house, stay away from me, and stay away from the kids. It was pretty intense. Eventually, my mother saw that it was actually my stepdad, and calmed down. It was around this point that she decided it was probably time that they got outside help. So they called my step-grandfather. My step-grandfather's wife has a brother, that is, a retired priest and he currently lives somewhere in Mexico. By calling my step-grandpa, they got his contact info, and invited him up to the States as a sort of consultant. He ended up flying up and listening to our story. He ended up saying that he heard of paranormal things happening to people in his line of work, but never to the extent that it was happening to us. He ended up giving us the contact information of a female pastor that travels around and deals with this stuff. He described her to us as someone who was especially sensitive to paranormal phenomena. He told us to just call her, tell her that he referred her to us, and to invite her over. Nothing more. He was specific about not telling her anything about what was happening, and that, as soon as she steps foot into the house, she'll immediately start to spout off stuff about your house's history, people who have died there and the like. So we give her a call. My mother followed the priest's instructions, and as they were saying their goodbyes, my pastor starts yelling, Stop! Someone is trying to talk to you. 
She's extremely angry. She wants me to tell you that you moved it and she wants you to put it back where it was right now. And then she hung up. So it just happened that my family was having a garage sale at the time. We moved some of the more useless stuff to the basement. One of these were these dolls. Now, these weren't just any dolls. These were vintage dolls from when my great grandma was a girl before she passed away. She was extremely adamant about my mother inheriting them. She was definitely the type of person to get angry over something like moving her possessions somewhere. As soon as the pastor hung up, she knew exactly what the pastor was talking about and moved the dolls. Now, the thing with the pastor didn't quite work out. On the day that she was supposed to visit, the pastor forgot our address and phone number and looked on her phone to contact us except all of our contact information was erased. We ended up calling her later that day, gave her our number and address again, and she said that she was more than willing to still come over. At this point, she got into her car and it wouldn't start. She called a towing company to try and get to the shop so that it could be fixed, except the tow truck got into an accident on the way over to her house. Suffice to say, these were a coincidentally, or maybe not, long string of bad luck. So she was never able to come out. So since that didn't work out, we went to a different source for help. We called a paranormal investigation company that is local to our area. It was an interesting experience to say the least. They came over and spent the night. They split up into groups and investigated a different part of my house. They had cameras and these recorders that supposedly picked up on super low frequencies. One of the things that they caught floating somewhere in our guest room, as well as several orbs. They found a whole bunch of stuff on the voice recorders and they interviewed, or so they say, four different entities. They identified a young girl, an older teenager, and a woman by the name of Lorelei, and a man named Frank. Now this caught my mother's attention, because it just so happened that the man that my mother resuscitated was called Frank. Upon more investigation, the man said that he liked my mother, and hated my stepfather. That was about all that happened with that. For a while, the paranormal investigators became kind of famous within their community because they got a lot of evidence. So around this time is when I took some leave from the Navy and came back home. It was very quiet while I was there, except for one night. I was sitting in the living room reading when I felt like someone was watching me. It got so bad that I actually went outside with a flashlight and started looking through bushes because I was convinced that someone was stalking me. It ended up being nothing and the feeling went away after a couple of hours. Fast forward to a couple of months ago. My uncle's childhood best friend that we hadn't talked to in many years stopped by for a barbecue. He had a new girlfriend. As soon as my family friend and his girlfriend stepped through the door, the woman stopped abruptly and asked my mother, how many do you have? My mother said, I have five children. Four are from me and the other is a stepdaughter. No, that's not what I meant. My mother said uncertainly, we have four ghosts. A little girl, a teenager, a woman and a man. No, you have at least two men. Because I have two brutes that are currently screaming in my face and telling me to get out. My mother and her had a very long conversation. Now, I would take what I'm about to tell you with a grain of salt. 
As soon as my mother told me this, I said, No way. That's the most tall-tailed bullcrap I've ever heard. But you never know. Maybe I'm wrong. The woman told my mother that she's always had the ability to see ghosts all of her life, among other things, such as telekinetic abilities. She used to shatter light bulbs above her mother's head when she was a little girl. One day, her teacher was being mean to her. The next thing you know, the teacher is being lifted up off the air and pinned against the wall by some invisible force. She told us that she was then taken away by the government and had experiments performed on her to try and replicate the event. She said the government hadn't had contact with her in some time. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that last part, but whole sensitivity thing was obviously pretty consistent with our experiences. Something else that she told us was that the whole land around us was still haunted as hell. She said that the neighbours across from us have nothing less than an infestation, and she had never seen anything like it. She ended up leaving, and all of the paranormal events stopped. She later contacted my mother and mentioned that the two men that were shouting at her left with her because they found out that she could see and hear them. They started messing with her by hiding her stuff under her bed and knocking things over. She told us that she could get rid of them though. And since then it's been quiet. No problems except for this one time that my mother was alone in her room when the spring door stopper started randomly vibrating side to side. Not in the, oh, there must be a big truck that just shook the house kind of way. More the, this was someone pulling that thing to its full range of motion and letting it go, as if someone was playing with it. My mother remembered the little girl ghost that was at the house and said, I know you're there, honey. It's okay if you want to play a bit. You can stay here as long as you're not me. And that was that. I grew up in a very rural area in the Appalachians. There was no town for half an hour or longer drive in any direction. No traffic lights, just back roads and terrifying houses. And a lot of forest. I grew up without limited electricity, water, and all of that jazz, as did most of the people around me. We had a set of well-off retirees move in pretty close to my house on the opposite side of the mountain. They built a fancy house on the other side of the mountain and had a good long winding one mile long driveway from the main mountain road. I knew the neighbors simply as Steve and Joanne Steve and Joanne ended up getting custody of three of their grandchildren when I was about three years old, and they were very young and had developmental delays. One was deaf, one was a quadriplegic, and the youngest, Jonathan, and not exactly sure what was wrong with him, but he was slow, wore a helmet and that kind of thing, but I was too little to know. Since we lived in an old unsettled territory, where there is a ton of exposed wells from old foundations and cabins. My dad was always very cautious about where I played, because of the danger of them. And despite Steve and Joanne's precautions, and no one apparently knows how, Jonathan got outside one day, wandered out into the woods, and fell in one of those wells. It happened to be one that had water in it, and he drowned. I was around five years old, and I remember hearing when the cops found his body, that he had drowned, and how inconceivable that was to me as a kid. I went to the funeral as well, and after this, the family built a large, gated deck around the house that was airtight to protect the kids just in case. It was a huge project, and an absolutely gigantic locked gate. My mum hung out with the family pretty often, so I was dragged over there for quite a few years until I was eight or so. 
She would do work for them like clean their house or milk their goats. And I just wandered on the creepy deck on the side of the mountain and felt very unsettled. I got those feelings a lot as a kid. And to tell the truth, I had forgotten about the little boy who died. But anyway, I just remember being in the house and hating it there. Then one day, Steve and Joanne just up and left. They left everything and moved to Alaska. That was the rumor anyway. But the house sat empty. I used to see the house through the woods when I was out exploring. And I remember it because none of my dogs would ever go towards the house at all. I could sometimes hear these loud scrapes and booms. Think of a sound that a tin sheet would make if you stomped on it. And it felt like the empty house was looking back at me. I attributed the sound to bears or deers or other loud animals and avoided it. One day I was about 10 years old and saw an old truck peel into the driveway. I alerted my father who grabbed his gun and jumped into his truck. He's a pretty aggressive paranoid mountain man and he followed the truck up and when he returned I asked him who it was and he refused to talk to me. But sneaky me pretended to play outside but was actually outside the window listening as he told my mum what happened. The men in the other truck were two of Steve's sons. They had told my dad they were there to get one final look at the house that they helped build because it was being sold and they apparently asked my dad if he had ever gotten a weird feeling from the house. My dad said no and as he explained it to my mum, he said while they were out there helping build that deck that they heard the sound of kids running around the planks and that one time he saw a shadow fall over his back and the shadow was a young kid wearing a helmet. This absolutely petrified me and I never told anyone what I heard. Fast forward a few years. When I was 12, I got really into horseback riding. However, after a few months of near misses from idiotic speeding drivers on the road, my dad had enough and banned me to mountain trail riding only. In his opinion, it was safer. I would have agreed at this point if he would have let me carry a knife or gun. The most convenient trail was the mile long dirt driveway to the abandoned house. Fair enough. I didn't have to ride the whole driveway and see the house. I could just go back and forth along the riding road and turn back before I reached the end of the driveway. So one day I was doing this and got braver and braver. Eventually I decided I would ride my horse up to the last turn, which was level with the house and where everyone parked their cars. I guess I was curious and just wanted to see this place up close now, as it had gotten dilapidated and the grand deck was looking pretty moldy. The driveway end was all overgrown, which my horse was really excited about. We were doing walks and trots for a good hour or two. His name was Tennessee. He was all sweaty and wet, and we walked up to the end of the driveway and immediately went for the tall grass, dipping his head down to about knee level to reach it nibbling away. I know I was going to be in trouble for letting him eat grass, but I had to mention before anything else that this horse was not skittish. He was middle-aged and had been rodeo trick horse trained and was not afraid of wimpy horse scary things like loud noises or cars. He was intelligent and definitely the best trained animal I'd ever owned. He could even rear in a circle on his hind legs. It's one of those rodeo tricks. In any case, we were there for a good five minutes the air was still, the day was hot, and the sun was shining. I was staring ahead. The house was to my right, and the horse and I were perpendicular to it. Down the mountain and just zoning out. I admit that I felt watched like I always did when I was near the house. But since I felt that way 99% of the time as a kid, it was easily ignored. But then, I heard running footsteps in the empty house. I turned my head to look, and when I did, I got this insane feeling of dread. I half expected a bear to rush at me. The worst part is, just as this feeling hit me, my horse abruptly stopped his chewing and tensed up. 
I could feel it. His head shot to the right as well as his ears pointing forwards. That's when I internally went, oh shit. Because the confirmation from my horse was that this whole thing was real. We stared at the house in unison, footsteps getting stronger, and the feeling of dread gradually getting worse. And then suddenly, a scraping noise like metal on metal. There was a huge swamp cooler in the large kitchen window, which got pulled inside as we stood there. I saw it wiggle and bang. It fell and all the doors and windows shook. Whatever had been walking inside lifted this immensely huge thing and pushed it inwards because it wouldn't push outwards. When the swamp cooler disappeared, my horse straight up bolted. He had never done that before or since, even after being near gunshots and wild boars, but he took off in a dead run and I just let him go. I was absolutely terrified and I remember hearing his hooves thundering along the dirt and gravel and hearing the wind in my own heartbeat and just this ungodly roaring, almost like a lion or a bear. Anyway, that's the story. Make of it what you will. I very slyly told my dad that I had seen the swamp cooler missing from the window, and he went over to check, and said the house had been ransacked, but nothing was stolen. He said it was human. There were no evidence of animals being inside. But the cabinets were opened, and the food and belongings were thrown around. He was angry, thinking it was a vandal. But he said all the doors were locked, and the windows intact. I lived in a house that was haunted. My room must have been the worst area because my siblings and stepdad did hear and see things, but I got something just about every night that would happen. Constant footsteps and the feeling of being watched. Walking through my room, I'd suddenly hit spots that were freezing cold. The typical ghost signs everyone hears about in movies. But it got stranger when it followed us to our next house and got worse to the point that my mum finally believed me when she saw a hand reaching from underneath a door right next to her. After three weeks of living in that house, my cat scratched my arm pretty deeply when I picked her up, and then we didn't see her for a week. We were searching like crazy. We went back to our old house and found her inside and completely shut and locked in the boarded up house. It was an old farmhouse and we got evicted, and she was inside a closet upstairs with the door closed in on her, and the door even opened outwards, so she couldn't have closed it on herself easily. Luckily, she was still alive, but nearly starved to death. Everything continued and just got worse. Hearing the thuds of someone hammering their fists on the walls would wake me up every single night, but I always would wake up at a different time. It would do three to wake me up. Then, as if to prove to me that it wasn't just my imagination when I woke up, it would do one more and stop every night. Then, we found out that my mum's ex-husband had touched my brother inappropriately. A while after we found out I was alone in my room at night, I wished that he would die, and I immediately heard a thump on the wall. He killed himself within the week. However, the spooky things didn't stop there. The first thing that ever happened at the house, actually, was shortly after we moved in. And it was one of the few times that it wasn't me it happened to. My stepdad was downstairs at the house watching TV. When we heard someone running across the floor upstairs heading towards his model train room. He thought I was still home, since I was the only one with the room upstairs. He grabbed his 2x4 that had a handle on it, and started heading towards the stairs to go paddle my ass, since I wasn't allowed in there, when he started hearing really loud thuds. He said it was like someone was up there knocking bureaus and throwing his boxes of trains. He said he began yelling, and it kept going, then halfway up the stairs it got dead quiet, and he started to think that it wasn't me, 
since I didn't answer when he called. So he went back downstairs and got his gun. When he went back, everything was exactly how it was left. This was the only reason he started believing me when things happened. My mum wasn't convinced at all. Every night, I heard footsteps on the ceiling above my room, without fail. There would be also a lot of thuds that sounded like they were coming from random spots on my wall. There was one night, where it was happening every time I would finally think it was over. Just set slow thuds over and over again, two to four at a time, pausing every few seconds between each knock. My mum heard it from their bedroom, and was relatively close by one, when I had already fallen asleep, and sent Shane to come and yell at me. But on his way over, he could hear the knocking right on the door of my bedroom. He opened it, and I was passed out on my bed. I woke up to him listening to the wall, trying to find out where the noise was coming from, at about 3am. One day, I was with my brother downstairs, switching off while playing Big Mooth the Truckers, and we heard running footsteps coming from my room. My brother hadn't any experiences with it, even though his room is directly beneath mine, and he got really nervous when I casually mentioned that it was the ghost, and would stop if we ignored it. Being a mean older brother, and having gotten used to it, I offered to go investigate with him. Again, he stopped on our way up the stairs. My brother was so scared at this point, he brought a steak knife with him. And to give you an idea of the surroundings, my room at the time was absolutely huge. Like, so big, that I just arranged my furniture to only use half of it, because I didn't have much stuff. On the side of the room I didn't use, there was a closet that I always covered up with a sheet, because it made me nervous at night, with all the noises going on. When we walked through the doorway, the first thing we noticed was that the sheet was blown way up into the air, even through there, despite the fact that there was no wind in the room, and no window was open upstairs. By this point I was too afraid, and my brother was running down the stairs before the sheet had time to settle. For some reason I had courage that day and went to take a look. But when I got close, I could hear scratching as well as relieved thinking that it was just the cat. But I looked around the inside and couldn't see her, but could still hear the scratching. It sounded just like a cat trying to get through an open door. When I listened closely, I could hear it coming from the left wall, and I put my hand on the wall and felt it move. And then I realized that it wasn't the wall, and it was just one of those boards that you would put tool hangers on and stuff, where it has all those tiny holes all throughout the board that the legs of the hangers insert into. When it fell away, I felt a freezing burst of air to my face that sent me running out of the house. When my parents finally got home, we went and looked at it. There was a small crevice behind it that was probably about three foot high and a couple of feet deep. All I could picture was my imagination, with a five-year-old kid curled up and hiding in there. The next time my family was gone, I boarded the damn thing up with plywood, and covered it up with a sheet. But every now and then, I would see the sheet kick up, like there was a breeze coming through it. One morning months after this, I woke up and my arm was itching like crazy. I felt a bit of a jump with my hand, and thought it was mosquito bite. But then I realized it wasn't just a little round bug bite. It was like a bump forming a line. So I finally sat up and pulled my shirt off to look at where I had felt it. On my left bicep right below my shoulders, there was a red mark in the shape of a hand. I really don't know how to explain it, but it was pretty much indented on my skin, and the bump I felt was the outline. The hand was tiny and only had three fingers and a thumb, but it didn't look like it was missing a finger, it just looked like it had the hand that only was supposed to have three fingers. 
I would say it wasn't much bigger than a ten-year-old's hand. It was also a left hand print from what I could tell. I sat there for at least 15 minutes trying to lay my hand on it in a way that would match up, but it didn't seem possible. It was still bright red when I decided to leave my room for the second time, and I got downstairs to show my mother, but it was gone. I had thought for sure that she would believe me if she had seen it. Then we moved into a second house and things died down for three to four weeks until my mum was working with my stepdad on our bathroom and she was sitting on the floor just outside the door, passing tools and such. She noticed a hand reaching under the door to my brother's room. She thought it was my brother trying to scare her, so she quickly opens the door to bonk him on the head. But, just like before, he was in his bed fast asleep, all the way on the other side of the room. She finally believed me after that. It was only two to three days after this that the cat went missing and we found her in the old house locked in the closet. Things started back up again with the footsteps and thumping. A lot of stuff happened in between. I was stressed and depressed, about as far as anyone could possibly go. I was constantly berated at school and had recently been beaten up by five of those kids. I was getting hit and verbally abused about daily, but my arsehat stepfather had to work on the farm almost all the time before and after school and had recently found out that my brother had been touched inappropriately by my previous stepfather. I was never touched to that level, but some things came to light in my mind that still haunt me and the year before my best friend slash brother had died of cancer. I was only 13, but I really wanted life to end at that point. I went out to our big barn in the middle of the night and got a rope. On the second floor of the barn was a huge window. I was sitting on the window crying when I got cold and looked behind me. I could see someone standing in the corner of the barn. I saw that often in the barns, but always out of the corner of my eye. This time I stared. I must have sat there staring for a solid two minutes, and I started calmly talking, telling it how much I didn't care anymore. I taunted it. I wanted it to push me out the window so I didn't have to do it myself. It just stood there completely black and completely silent. Eventually, I just got angry and told it to piss off, and that I'm done with everything. And so I went back inside, and that's when I grabbed the 2x4 and just went into my parents' room and hit him as hard as I could with it. I was a coward, so I only hit his arm, but he woke up and I ran. He chased me outside in his boxes and grabbed the first thing that he could see, one of those adjustable wrenches, and threw it at my back, but I kept on running. My mum finally left him when I told her that I had been thinking about ending it all. Well, she left him for about a month before they got back together. But what it did accomplish was moving far away from that area for good. And when they got back together, he moved to where we were living. I haven't been haunted, except for two strange dreams that were ridiculously vivid out of body experiences where I came back to find a girl that was with me in my bed. She was being ripped apart by a completely black, small figure of a boy. They just looked and felt so real. I remember feeling burning on my arm and feeling the warmth of blood getting on my face. When I walked into the room, but nothing else had actually happened, except for when I went back to the farm earlier this year during the summer which was very unsettling, as I'm still confused as to what the hell was going on there. My BFF, myself, and a mutual best friend rented a super old, think in the early 1900s, house, situated perfectly on the edge of the bad part of town, the college only part of town, and on the way to the good part of town. 
so it was heavily trafficked by classmates and a big party place. BFF is super into paranormal stuff, but not weird about it. Very level-headed. Think raised in rural Appalachia and all the folklore that goes along with it. Our mutual best friend wasn't heavily oriented either way, but pretty open to that sort of stuff. I was an avid denier, despite having a few unexplainable experiences in the past. The knocking started happening pretty much immediately, but none of us figured it out for about a month, because we thought it was just happening to us individually. Like one of us would be in our bedroom, or the bathroom, it was especially likely in the bathroom door, and any door leading out of my mutual best friend's room. For whatever reason, it never happened with any exterior doors, and there'd come a knock on the door. We would shout, come in, or who is it, to no answer, just another knocking, always loud and formal, like three perfectly timed knocks. You would call, come in, or whatever, as long as you liked. There would never be any answer, and never anyone actually there. I thought it was my roommates just screwing around, or old house stuff. I don't know, I was 22. And the others initially thought variations of the same thing. Then, we were sitting around smoking a bowl one night, and my best friend forever brings up the knockings, explaining what's been going on. And we all look around at each other, that kind of holy crap you too moment, and we all swapped stories. We laughed, because it didn't really feel super threatening with all of us just chatting about it. My BFF suggests paranormal. Mutual best friend kind of laughs it off and says, maybe. And I flat out dismiss it because no way. And we go on. It keeps happening, mostly randomly, but it's happening now when other people are actually on the other side of doors. So it's not a hundred percent just random hallucinations passing back and forth. On the night it got really overt, BFF and I were just sitting on the couch watching TV. MBF in his bedroom, with doors shut. One of his bedroom doors went directly into the bathroom, one directly into the living room where my BFF and I were watching TV, and a third directly into my bedroom. Think sort of circular layout with doors going through common areas, but also connecting sleeping areas. So BFF and I are in the living room and can see the shut bedroom door of the mutual best friend, as well as the open bathroom door from the common area. We can clearly see that no one is in the bathroom and can clearly see the mutual best friend's bedroom door. Suddenly, the mutual best friend shouts, come in, although we didn't hear knocking. But that often happened. Only the person responding was actually hearing the noise. BFF and I share a glance, giggle, and go to hit the bowl again. When we hear, come in, loud and angry, from the room. Okay, fair enough. It gets aggravating after a while, but clearly there is no one at the other door, so we don't know why he's bothering to get louder. I'm opening my mouth to shout something smart while looking at my BFF, and I remember this part super clearly because it was surprising. When there's a huge bang, like something heavy had been dropped from a long way in the mutual best friend's bedroom, and it startled us both badly. Then, less than a second later, he comes flying out the door, nearly ripping the door off its hinges, and races into the living room with us. And he stopped at the opposite wall, breathing really heavily, 
eyes way too wide, and is staring at us scared to death. We are equally alarmed from the first noise, then from the look he's giving us, and then his room. We're almost shouting at him to explain what happened, and he said he got annoyed because the knocking was coming from both doors, from the bathroom and from the living room. And he went to jerk open the bathroom door, but when he started to pull on it, it yanked out of his hand and closed, like way harder than should have been possible. And that was the noise. It also scared him into nearly pissing himself, so he bolted. The knocking continued randomly throughout the rest of our time in the house. Guests would hear it and respond all the time. Eventually, most people who were at our place more than once a week knew the story. And our advice was pretty universal. Not to respond to it, but to walk to the doors and open them instead. This wasn't anything clever. We just got super tired of people shouting come in from different rooms all of the time the baby stuff. These ones had a lot more feel of something possibly sentient, or I don't know, more symbolism or something than knocking. It's hard to explain. Hopefully it'll make more sense once I've got the story told. But these stories feel a lot more like stereotypical ghost movie behaviour than some of the other creepier stuff that was more obtuse or random. So again, this stuff started happening almost at once, but we didn't realise it because we thought it was legitimate, or that it was just any single of us being mistaken or possibly being high or crazy. It always happened when anyone was laying down, and I never heard it in another place or time. Here's mine. I was laying down midday, about to take a power nap and heard a baby crying. It sounded very close. Right outside the house, perhaps. I went into my BFF's room, as it's right beside mine, and it sounded like it was coming from there. I listened, and still sounded right outside. Like the window. I looked out of it, and heard it clearly, but there was no source. There was a house right next to us, but the windows were down, and it sounded super clear. Still, I chalked it up to a loud baby and weird acoustics, and thought nothing of it. It happened a few more times, and kept being weird because it was so clear, and more during the day than the night. But I still chalked it up to the neighbours having a very loud baby. I spoke to the BFF about it one afternoon in passing, and she looks and says that she's noticed it too. It's so weird, because it sounds so close. And agree that it is weird. And forget about it. Because what are we going to do about it? We speak to the mutual best friend. This convo was a bit later than the big scary knocking incident. So he's understandably less dismissive of the weird stuff now. And he agrees he's heard it so really didn't care to check about it. A few days later, he returns and lets us know he passed the neighbours, who we hadn't met or cared to because we were 22, sitting on their porch, to find out that they were three fairly elderly African-American gentlemen with no baby in sight. Mutual best friend paused to ask if they had a baby around or often, and if they heard a baby crying during the day. The men give adamant refusals to both questions, so my BFF and mutual best friend at this point are feeling fairly crazy overall. She's sure it's a ghost, or multiple, but the mutual best friend is sure it's something. I'm mostly annoyed, but also I'm not a total idiot, so I'm admitting that something is weird. So we start asking people who spend a lot of time in the house. Close friends, dealers, buyers, significant others, and people allowed to chill at our spot between classes if they're having any of these experiences. Turns out that most of them had heard the baby crying. 
mostly during the day, and always when they're laying down on the couch or on a bed. Whatever. But no one ever heard it, initially while they were up and about. We circle the house inside and out a dozen times while we hear it with different people and different times, trying to pinpoint where it was coming from. The best way to describe it was if you were standing in my BFF's bedroom. It sounded as if it was just on the other side of the exterior wall to the house. If you went to the exact spot of the house outside, it sounded like the crying was coming from just the other side inside my best friend's room. That's where it was loudest, and no one else could detect it coming any more strongly from any other direction. Weird as hell. My apartment is haunted. I'm 20 years old and live in a fairly small apartment complex. I live here with my husband and two-year-old daughter. We've lived here for about a year and a half, and the weird stuff started about eight months ago. In my apartment, there are two bedrooms, and in my daughter's room, there is a utility closet and a regular sliding door closet. In my room, one whole wall is basically a closet with three sliding doors. You may be wondering why I'm explaining closets. Well, this is because that's where all the creepiness started. One huge OCD tick of mine is closing doors. I cannot stand doors being open for no reason. So every door in my home is shut almost 24-7. Or so I thought. One day while I was visiting my cousin, who lives one apartment building over from me, for an all-day occasion, my daughter was gone with family for the weekend, and my husband was at work. Some odd stuff happened. My husband made it home first, and only went in for about five minutes to grab something out the kitchen, and bring it over to my cousin's place. He verified that I indeed had closed every door while he got home. After sitting around and chatting with my cousin for a few more hours, we went home. Walking through my front door, I felt like something was off. It was pitch black, but I chalked it up to my husband shutting off the stove light, which in itself is still odd. Stumbling for the light switch, we find one of my daughter's toys placed in front of the light switch, where in the dark, you could easily trip over it. This was sign too that something was off. I knew for a fact that it hadn't been there where I'd left earlier. I brushed it off and continued on getting settled in for the night. Later, while walking down the hall, I stopped dead in my tracks. One third of the way down the hall, when I saw my daughter's bedroom door slightly ajar. Had my husband been in there? I could have sworn he was in the living room the entire time. But then I heard it. The closet door. Her closet door, in the pitch black of her room, had slammed open. I stood frozen for a moment before slowly peeking around the corner of her door frame. Nothing. The door was closed, but something else catches my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see it. A small light. A flashlight that had previously been in the bottom drawer of the kitchen. It sat in the center of my daughter's bed, with the light illuminating the corner behind her bed. I approached it slowly, and the moment my hand connected with the light, a button-operated toy began flashing behind me. You heard that right. This toy that you have to manually press buttons onto to turn on was flashing while I was cornered in my daughter's room. I felt my heart was just about to force its way up my throat. I couldn't breathe, until, like a hero out of a movie, my husband walked in asking what I was doing, and I left the room quickly. A few nights later, my daughter is still out with family, and me and my husband are in bed. It's the middle of the night, and I'm having the weirdest dream. I dream that I'm lying awake in bed, 
and there was a dark shape in the darkest corner of my room. And it startles me awake. Or so I think. I wake up in another dream with this tall, dark figure bent over my bed staring down at me. This time I'm jolted awake, and I'm trying to catch my breath. While I sit in the silent dark, my husband is sleeping, and I'm essentially alone. That's when I hear it. My closet door is shaking back and forth on the track, not like being blown by wind, but like someone is shoving it trying to get out. At this point I'm in tears and shaking my husband awake, and the moment his eyes open it stops. I get frustrated and cry harder, because now I feel like I'm going crazy, but this entity obviously isn't done yet. Night after night of listening to toys coming on alone, and closets opening and closing, does it finally happen? I have this problem with my eyes called optic neuritis, which causes me to occasionally lose my eyesight when I stress out too much. The reason I tell you this is because the night my husband finally got to see what I was talking about, was the night I lost my vision for a few days. We were in bed sometime at night, and it's quiet. I'm really good at detecting sound, since I'm basically blind every few months or so, when I hear a familiar click. I sat straight up in bed. Our hallway light is a twist light, so to turn it on you twist a little knob at the bottom, and it clicks when you twist it. At the same time, my husband jumps out of bed, because he sees the hall light flash on through the crack of the door. I'm panicking, but I know that he is finally going to understand what I've been suffering through. He opens the door, and from what he told me, every door in the house was wide open. After a long night of closing doors and tear-filled apologies, we finally pass out from exhaustion. My daughter comes home and is acting strange, talking to walls, sitting in her closet, and pointing at corners. This scares me, but my husband says it's normal kid stuff. And before bed, my daughter and I are in the living room, and she's using her potty chair when she points into the kitchen and says, push it off. And within seconds, a glass is flung from the counter at the wall, and lands upright on the floor. I'm traumatized living in my apartment. One thing more happened yesterday, when me and a friend were sitting in the living room with my daughter, and she gets up and runs to the open door. I assume my husband is home, because before she gets there the doorknob starts turning, like he's trying to unlock it. And the moment she unlocks it, the door starts to open but slams before she can pull it open. I'm confused at this point, and so is my friend, so I check the door and nobody is even near it. I live at the top of some stairs, so I'd hear someone running down the stairs if it was a joke. My daughter is visiting for holidays with family, and I'm alone. While I'm video chatting with my mother, she stops mid-sentence and says hi to my husband. I'm confused, and think that she can see the confusion on my face because she begins to look confused as well. I remind my mother that I'm alone, and she goes pale, explaining that she had just seen the shape of a person standing in the hall behind the couch where I was sitting. Moments later, after I walk through the house with an old pocket knife in hand, I find nothing. But now my mum and I, at the same time, ask, is that running water? I look around trying to find the source of the sound, checking every bathroom, not a drip. Then the sound sounds like it's coming from the kitchen, nothing again. Frustrated, I stomp back to the bathroom, and my skin begins to crawl. The sink is on full blast. How? Confused yet again, I walk back into the living room, phone still in hand, talking to my mother and the wall behind me that connects the living room and my daughter's room. There's a loud bang, like someone hit the apartment wall very hard. I spent an hour waiting outside my apartment on the phone with my mum, waiting for my husband to get home, 
and survey it further before I entered. I'm 19 now. But from the age of 7 to 12, we lived in a house in Alabama. It was a nice neighborhood. We had some woods behind our house, but you could see through them to another neighborhood sort of far away. This part does matter. I can't remember them in order, but I do remember a lot of experiences. My family also experienced it too and we had so much documentation of things happening that we almost had some paranormal people come out, but we moved out abruptly. Their spirit, ghost, whatever you want to say that lived in the house, wasn't just a singular one. There were numerous. From the moment we moved into the house, everyone had a feeling that something was off and very eerie. When we bought the house, it was supposed to be 200k plus, but the owner wanted it gone and refused to walk the house with us and sold it for about 130k. Here are some of the stories. I was asleep and above my bed, and there was a huge rectangular window that had a street lamp outside it, and the light would shine in and you could see the reflections on the walls. As I was lying there, I saw a man with a huge top hat walking across my room in the shadows. It stopped in the corner and I waited for a few minutes terrified and decided I would see if it was someone outside so that I could tell my dad. I got up and looked out the window and there was nothing there. When I looked back at the wall, nothing was there. Numerous times I woke up and would see white orbs floating around the room. There was a time my friends spent the night and went home at 4am because the door to my room faced our solarium. And inside the solarium, she saw an old man sitting in our chair rocking. She later saw a dark shadow walk down our hallway. My brother's friend came over during the day, and my brother was showing him around. For some bizarre reason, they stopped in my room and opened the closet door. Both of them saw a toddler girl. She was bloody and crying, and disappeared right in front of their eyes. He never came back. This was the time I was home alone. My brother is my step, but anyway, his dad has been passed for years at this point. So, he has a huge box including his dad's things. One of those things being a jack-in-the-box, way up in the closet, no way of falling. I was sitting in my living room watching a movie and playing with Barbies. I had to go to the bathroom, so walking past my brother's room, I heard something fall. I stopped, scared. I'm sure three to five minutes passed, because I was paralysed with fear, when the jack-in-the-box started winding up and going off. I ran into my room, locked myself in there and called my parents, and didn't leave the room for six hours until they got home. There was another time, when at around three in the morning, my parents were doing a house project and remodeling their room and adding a door. So we were all outside. I was playing in the backyard on the tire swing facing the woods. And I remember seeing two big eyes in the woods, huge. So I ran to my dad and showed him. Compared to my dad, the eyes were seven to eight feet off the ground. He called my brother over there and asked if he saw it, and he did. He ran inside and hid. I watched my dad, and my dad moved and made certain stances to see if their eyes would follow, and they did. We walked inside, and my dad and I walked back out a few hours later, and the eyes were gone. 
There was this time we had a babysitter, and we were asleep in our rooms while she was in my parents' room watching TV. She was a good friend of ours. She fell asleep, and woke up to me waking her up in bed, and tugging on her, and she got up. And I walked into my parents' bathroom, while she followed and I disappeared. She freaked out, and ran to my room, and I was asleep in bed. From my parents' bed, you could see down the hallway, and see the door to my room, the bathroom, and my brother's room. And so my dad was up at around two, watching a movie, when he saw a figure pop out from my door. Shining into the hallway, he looked at it, thinking it was me, and it disappeared. This continued back and forth for twenty minutes, and he got up once again, and I was asleep. My dad saw the old man from the bathroom on our back porch, so he ran outside, and nothing was there. This happened numerous times. We would often hear things at night. So one night we set up a recorder and a camera in the living room. During the night it ran, and when we woke up, there were a few shadow figures in the hallway, walking back and forth, but nothing on camera. But the recorder, you can hear a loud organ playing with a flute. It went on for hours. When it stopped, you just heard a shrill scream. We didn't own an organ. Let alone a piano. My stepmom used to cut hair in our house, and had her own little salon. So while cutting my brother's hair, we all kind of were hanging out with the radio on, when it shoots up to full blast. We all kind of stopped, and my stepmom piped up, saying to turn it back down or whatever, and the volume went back to the normal sound. It happened once or twice, but that was it. Numerous things would fly and hit you out of nowhere. You would also hear people when you were home alone, cabinets shutting, the front door slamming. There was never anyone there. Pets would disappear, never to be found. Things like hamsters with no way of getting out. We once found a scorpion, and we put a thick glass bottle over it. And left it there for three to four hours. When we got back home, the glass bottle was right still, but the scorpion was gone. We kept all our dogs outside, but we had a mini chihuahua who was sick, so we kept her inside for the day. My parents were at work, so my brother and I were the first to arrive home. She was mangled, and dead, obviously. In our living room, no explanation. There was once when we took down the mirror to my parents' bathroom, and behind it, a card fell out talking about Christianity. We helped carry the mirror and a few other things out of the bathroom, and left the card on the counter. When we walked back, it wasn't there, but later appeared under our hot tub, in the solarium. I do know that the man I saw in my room with the top hat has followed me to four different houses, and currently plays with my three-month-old baby while she's asleep. I catch it on the video's baby monitor sometimes. I hope you enjoyed my experiences. I am definitely a skeptic. But one experience I had house sitting for my aunt and uncle definitely raises some questions for me. They were going out of town for a weekend, and asked if I would keep an eye on the house and take care of their dogs while they were away. I was staying with my grandparents for the summer, as I usually did, and being a sixteen-year-old with a brand new driver's license. I jumped at the chance for a few days of freedom, with a house to myself during my summer vacation. I picked up my PlayStation, rented some games and movies, and stocked up on snacks and headed over to their place. 
The first night there was uneventful, but I remember feeling slightly uneasy being in the house. Nothing out of the ordinary was going on. I just attributed the uneasiness to being in the house alone for the first time, without my aunt or uncle there. Around 1am, I decided to go to bed and let the dogs out in the backyard to relieve themselves before bed. After they were done, I made sure everything was locked, doing the deadbolt and chain locks on the doors. I woke up the next morning, put some coffee on and got the dogs up to let them out. The uneasiness remained. I couldn't help but feel like I was being watched, even though I knew that no one else was around. After breakfast, I decided I was going to go for a bike ride and meet up with some friends. I put the dogs into their crates, locked up, and headed out. I was gone for maybe four hours until mid-afternoon, when I decided to head back to the house. When I walked in, the dogs were freaking out. Not your normal, happy to see you let me out the crate excitement, but full-blown panic, shaking, and foaming at the mouth, and howling. The works. These dogs are normally very calm and are perfectly content to spend most of the day in their crates, sleeping, as they go in on their own for naps. So this was really out of the ordinary. I opened the doors to their crates, but neither of them wanted to come out. Being a little freaked out myself at this point, I decided to check the house to make sure nothing had happened. All the windows were fine, everything was still locked, and the house was completely empty. At this point, I should mention how the house is laid out. It's an old house, late 1800s, and prior to my aunt and uncle owning it, it was divided up as a duplex. The upstairs was a separate apartment. They mentioned that an older woman had rented the upstairs while the previous owners lived downstairs. My aunt and uncle didn't rent the upstairs, but didn't really do anything to convert the house back into a single family dwelling. My uncle used the upstairs apartment as his home office, with several computers and a couple of modems, early 2000s dial-up. And most of the time, the door to the upstairs in the enclosed porch off the kitchen just stayed closed and locked. There wasn't really any reason to go up there. I decided, in an abundance of caution, since the dogs were so freaked out, that I should check the whole house. I unlocked the door to the upstairs and went up to check. I noticed that one of the computers was on. This was odd as my uncle had said in his note that he'd shut off everything upstairs and unplugged the surge protectors. Maybe he meant to do so, but got into a rush to get out the doors and forgot. No big deal. We were expecting storms later, so I shut the computer down, unplugged everything, and went back downstairs, locking the door behind me. By this point, the dogs had calmed down, and taken their usual spots on the couch, where I joined them to play some PlayStation. After dinner at around 8pm, the dogs and I were still on the couch watching movies and just chilling out, when all of a sudden, one of the dogs stands up on the couch, with all of the fur on his back standing on end, and begins growling towards the direction of the door to the stairs. He continued to do this for the next 5-10 to ten minutes, and nothing I did would distract him from whatever he was sensing. He eventually calmed down, and laid beside me again. A few hours later at 11pm, he resumed this, and the other dog joined in too this time. That's when I began to hear creaking coming from upstairs, like someone stepping on a loose floorboard. It didn't sound like footsteps just like someone rocking back and forth on the loose boards. Properly freaked out now, I went to investigate. This time I noticed that the door to the upstairs was now unlocked. 
I had locked it when I went up there earlier. Oh crap, someone might be in the house. I took a few steps back into the kitchen and grabbed a knife. You know, like a horror movie cliche. I checked the porch door to the backyard, which would be where someone would come into to get into the upstairs apartment. It was still locked. Okay, weird. The creaking upstairs was still happening. I opened the doors to the stairs and it stopped immediately. I turned the lights on and ascended. Nothing. I was freaking out over nothing. It was probably just the house settling. It was, after all, an old house. These things creaked and groaned all the time. A little embarrassed with myself for getting so freaked out, I went back downstairs again, locking the door behind me. I decided to get some sleep, popped in another movie, curled up on the couch and passed out. I was awoken at 2am a few hours later, to the dogs again in full-blown panic mode. This time I could hear them creaking again, and then something else happened. I heard a dial tone. I heard a modem upstairs dial some numbers. I heard it try to connect. Was I still asleep? No, I was definitely awake. I again grabbed the knife, went to the upstairs door, unlocked it, and opened the door. And the noises immediately again cut off. I went upstairs again to check. Nothing. Everything was still off and unplugged just as I had left it. I went back downstairs, locked everything up, and went to try and calm the dogs down. About ten minutes later, I heard the modem start up again. It would dial, try to connect, stop, and then dial again, and again, and again. The creaking was back too, and this time it did sound like someone was walking around up there, even though I knew I was alone and had checked every conceivable place in the house for an intruder to hide. I put up with this for another half hour or so, and it didn't let up. The dogs wouldn't calm down either. Eventually I'd had enough. I grabbed the dogs, loaded them into my car, and got the hell out of there. I went back to my grandparents' place, and stayed with them for the rest of the night with the dogs. The next morning my grandparents were surprised to see me there and asked what had happened. I relayed the previous night's events to them, feeling like a crazy person for what I had experienced. Strangely, they didn't seem surprised at all. They then told me that was the first time something strange happened there, and that my aunt and uncle had all kinds of stories about the place. For example, my little cousin frequently woke up screaming that a shadow man was looking at him in his bed and my uncle going upstairs to work on his computers one day and discovering that the gas stove had turned on, leaking gas into the house, and all kinds of things had been misplaced or doors left unlocked. I still don't think I believe in the paranormal and consider myself an agnostic atheist, but I still can't find a reasonable explanation for what happened and what I experienced that weekend. It was all too weird. When I was around five or six years old, my father got a really good job offer in Florida. My parents rented a house and intended to wait a year or so before buying one. Just until things settled down. The house they chose was okay. Nothing remarkable about it, especially to a six-year-old. Less than a month after we moved in, strange things started happening. My brother was really into jigsaw puzzles, big ones with hundreds of pieces, and he would put them together on the floor of our bedroom. They started getting messed up in the middle of the night, and naturally, he blamed me. Things would also go missing, then turn up in strange places. My toys would show up on his desk. His stuff would end up under my bed. 
Of course, I was blamed for that as well. Not long after that, I started to have really bad nightmares. My parents called them nightmares, but I would insist that I wasn't asleep when it happened. But of course, they did not believe me. I would be laying in my bed, waiting to fall asleep, and a young woman would appear. She was Caucasian, with tangled wavy black hair, and she was wearing a white cotton nightgown with little volatile flowers on it. She seemed to be hovering a few feet over the ground, swaying. Her body was straight, but her head was cocked to the side and bent sharply down. She didn't just appear in front of me though. It was more like when something had always been there, but you had never noticed it before. Like it was outside of your peripheral vision at first. It's a bit hard to explain. She never made a sound. Everything seemed totally silent. She would just stare at me with a look of pure rage on her face. I've pissed off my share of people in my time, but I've never seen a look like that before or since. It was like she was directing every ounce of hatred a person could have in their entire life at me, all at once. While she was staring at me, I couldn't move. I couldn't look away. I couldn't even breathe. Nothing. She would stay there for a while. I'm not sure how long, but it felt like forever. And then she would leave the same way she came. Not so much vanishing, but I would seem to lose sight of her, though I was looking right at her and she would be gone. Once I had control of my body again, I would become hysterical and wake up everyone in the house. After several of these nightmares, my mother took me to a therapist who said I was having night terrors. After several weeks of this, I heard my parents having a heated discussion in their bedroom. And the next day, my parents said that we were moving into another house. My mother claimed it was closer to both of their jobs. Within a week, we were in a new house. After moving out of that house, I never had another episode, though I still to this day have the occasional nightmare about it. Nothing like what I was experiencing then, more like a memory of it. My brother's puzzles and everything went back to normal too. It wasn't until many years later, after I had gone away to college and was back home visiting my mother, that she told me the real reason we had moved. My mother was talking to one of our neighbors about my night terrors. And she said that another family with a little girl rented the place a few years before us. And she had the exact same night terrors right down to the nightgown with the pretty purple flowers. The neighbor also mentioned that no one seemed to stay in that house for more than a year. My mother thought it was too much of a coincidence. So she started asking around and found out from an older couple in the neighborhood that a young woman had killed herself in the house in the early 60s. And my experience took place in the mid 80s. My mother went to the library and looked through the microfiche and found the news articles. It turns out that the girl in her early 20s had mental health issues and was being cared for by her parents and had got into that room in the middle of the night and hung herself by the ceiling light. It turns out she wasn't hovering off the ground, but rather hanging there. I never got to see the picture they had of the girl in the paper, but my mum said she had long, wavy black hair. I'll never forget her eyes burning through me and her face distorted in silent rage. I spent most of my younger life wondering what I had done to make her so angry. I now realize that it was most likely nothing to do with me. I hope she's found her peace.
My mum and dad split up when I was about two. My dad eventually ended up with his current wife, my stepmother, and they moved quite far away. Me and my older brother Bob would go up and see him once a month. When he first moved away, he lived in this big house that was set out really odd. You'd enter the house into a tiny hallway, with the front room on the right, a dining room to the left, you'd walk through the dining room to the kitchen, which had the back door to the garden, as well as having the bathroom and toilet attached to the kitchen. Super weird. Upstairs was my dad's bedroom to the right, above the front room, and to the left was a really long hallway. About halfway down the hallway was my brother's room. To the left, if you were just walking down the hallway, and at the end, you came face to face with the door to my room. So, the story goes that the place was haunted. I was reasonably young, about 11 or 12. They didn't want to tell me about it because they thought I'd get scared, which I understand. I found out later of the things that had happened to them whilst in the home. My stepmother had an incident where she was in her bedroom doing her hair in the mirror. She looked up in the mirror and saw a young girl standing behind her with her arms crossed over her chest. My stepmother squealed, closed her eyes and put her head in her hands. And when she looked up, the girl was gone. There were plenty of other instances of doors opening and closing, footsteps up and down the long hall, knocking about in the attic as well as the dogs acting strange, and we had two huge Rottweilers. One day I was staying the weekend, and I felt really sick. My family had made plans to go out, but I didn't feel up for it. They decided to leave me at home on my dad's PC in the care of the dogs. They didn't want to let me be alone in case something happened. While I was playing on the PC, the dogs went really weird. They were normally quite docile, really friendly and extremely loving. Well, they started running about the front room barking. Every once in a while, they would stop and just aggressively growl at the fireplace. I stopped and tried to calm them down. But as I knelt next to them, one of them turned and bit me on the face. He was immediately apologetic, licking and whimpering, whilst asking for cuddles. But I was scared and hurting a bit. He didn't even break the skin, so it wasn't a bad bite, and I felt like I was going to puke. I ran to the bathroom, and the family got home. I told them what happened, and they looked really concerned, but told me not to worry, and to keep an eye on us. A little something about my room. It was dark and really small. It had a tiny window as well as two huge wardrobes in the corner. I never really felt comfy in that room. I hated being able to see the bedroom door, and I have no idea why. I often read in bed, and then try to sleep on the floor, which is really odd now that I think back on it. I couldn't get comfy on that bed, and always had an impending feeling of unsafe. Later that night, we all went to bed. Now, I like to read before going to sleep, so I was reading to myself, as I was slowly drifting off to sleep, when the bedroom started screaming. I know that sounds bizarre, but there was just this insanely loud scream coming from the room. I had no idea what was going on, so I immediately panicked. Who wouldn't? I tried to open my door, and it wouldn't budge. I could hear my brother on the other side of the door also trying to open it, but I couldn't make out what he was saying. The scream was just too loud. I heard thumps outside the door, and I had no clue what was happening, and just kept trying to open the door whilst crying. Suddenly the screaming stopped, and the door opened. My brother, dad, and stepmother were just standing there staring at me. I was sobbing, 
then my brother hugged me, and my dad asked me why I was screaming, and whether I saw the girl. I said I wasn't, and my brother confirmed that he could hear me saying, what, throughout the screaming. I stayed in my brother's room that night. The next time I went to my dad's, he had moved homes. I heard the other stories years later. I'd hear other stories about the fireplace being pulled out and things being found. But to be honest, they sounded a bit far-fetched to me. I know this story might sound it too, but I know it happened because I lived it. When I was 15 or 16, my parents moved into a very old farmhouse. There was a family graveyard, not in the backyard, but close enough that I could see it out my bedroom window. It was on the land behind the house, fenced in. The graveyard was so close to our home, it freaked me out. The house itself had three bedrooms. I had two other siblings at the time, my brother and my sister. My parents kept the room downstairs. There was also an office room that my parents kept a piano in. A living room, dining room, kitchen, long hallway to the bathroom, a back porch, some room where we kept our washer and dryer, and then the upstairs was mine and my siblings room. I call mine a room, but it was just the open space at the top of the stairs. My siblings had to walk through there to get to their rooms. Off of mine and my brother's rooms was an unfinished kind of like attic room, but it was narrow, like you have to bend over to stand in it. And there was one light bulb in it and lots of stuff left behind in that area. An old lamp, a mirror, that kind of stuff. There was a door to this area in my room and my brother's. It creeped me out so much. I put my TV stand in front of the door blocking it. Then in my sister's room was a long, narrow, unfinished closet too. That was very cold and dark. It had one light bulb as well, but the light didn't work well surrounded by clothing. You see, it had a low ceiling. So you had to duck down if you wanted to go inside. And in order to get to the back, you had to crawl back a ways. Maybe it was because it was unfinished that it gave us the creeps, but my mum put my sister's dollhouse at the end of the closet, and we couldn't bring ourselves to play in there. The first day we moved in, my mum said she saw a man, and he looked angry, walking around the back side of the house. She tried to follow him and ask him what he was doing, but he disappeared going towards the graveyard. As we lived there, things only got weirder. I started wanting to walk out in the field behind our house, closer to the graveyard. And then even weirder, I actually went into the graveyard. Then I got comfortable enough to go and sit in there and read books. When I think about it now, I'm like, what in the world was I thinking? That was creepy. In this graveyard, were the graves of babies, adults, and children, and people of all ages. Most I couldn't read, they were so old. But the last name of the family was Suffin, and we called the house Suffin House. I think there were multiple spirits that haunted the house with many personalities. Some seemed kind and harmless. Others seemed angry and mean. My grandma was the first to hear babies crying. She followed the sound all over the house, and it stopped when she reached the bathroom. Sometimes my siblings and I would hear someone call our names. We figured it was our parents, and we would go and ask them why they called us, only to be told that they hadn't said a word. On other occasions, the light in the long hallway would come on by itself. It all seemed harmless, but then my dad said that he would go into a sleep paralysis state, 
and he said he would feel the sides of his bed bending with the weight of someone sitting on it. He could feel someone lean into his ear and feel their breath whisper names into it. He said it was a woman's voice the first time it happened, and she whispered how, which was the name of my mother's stepdad. He didn't think anything of it, but the next day we were told that Hal had passed away. The second name she told him was Sandra. She was a great aunt, and the same thing happened. She passed away the next day from a heart attack. He then started freaking out and wanting to move. He did tell this entity he didn't want to know this, and to please stop telling him. He said he felt like he was going crazy. He said it scared him so much. He was scared to tell anyone. Soon after that, we moved. And I remember the night before we moved out, it sounded like my parents were in the kitchen slamming cabinets. All my siblings heard it, and we all thought my parents were washing dishes or packing. But the next morning we asked what they'd been doing so loud the night before, and they said that it wasn't them that they'd heard it as well, and gotten up to check, but there was nothing. There was many other small things that happened. All my siblings have their own stories about the house, but that's all stuff that I remember, and that has scared me. I'm not usually one that believes in the paranormal, but this made me question everything. My girlfriend has always told me that her house was haunted. I'd always hear creaks and stuff upstairs and the occasional footstep, but I always played it off as normal house noises until one night of August this year. We were downstairs watching TV like usual, about to go to bed when we both got a very weird feeling almost simultaneously. She gave me a weird look, and I didn't think anything of it. So we went to bed. After a few minutes of her on Twitter and me on Reddit, we put our phones down and roll over to go to sleep. Then we both heard the words, good night, in a child's voice. Doesn't it seem strange? Well, considering there weren't children in the house, we both looked at each other. Why would you say goodnight like that? Then we realized neither of us had said it, and we left her room fairly quickly. We went downstairs to lay on the couch and watch a little TV and come to our senses and try to figure out where those words might have come from. Then, we both got that feeling like someone was watching us. Not like, oh, that dude over there's been staring at me, but a, something will not take their eyes off me no matter what I do kind of feeling. So we decided it was best to leave the house. We went to walk out the front door but right as we were about to open it, we heard the child's voice again. This time it came from the balcony right above us in the entryway. Clear as day, a child said, Mummy, Daddy. We looked at each other. I may or may not have screamed, and we ran to my car, and decided to drive to the one place that was open in our shitty small Oregon town, Walmart. The problem was, as soon as we got in the car, we knew something had come with us, and it was pissed for leaving. The second we got into my Honda, there was nothing but the feeling of hate instilled into both of us for no reason whatsoever. Whatever it was filled that car with hate. It's now about 4am, and I have to be at work in 5 hours, so we decide to go back to her house and to try and get some sleep, and see what happens. We walk into the front door, and nothing. It's quiet. 
We walk up the stairs, turn right, and suddenly it sounds like a dog is growling from her upstairs bathroom. It takes me a second though, because I grew up with dogs, and all I could think about was that it was mine, just being weird. Five seconds later, I realize I'm at her house, and no dog of mine, or any others for that matter, has ever set paw in there. Something was growling, and we didn't know what it was. At this point, I'm pissed at whatever is happening because I'm tired and need to sleep for work. So I come up with this brilliant plan to talk shit to whatever it was causing these issues. The only thing that sticks out at this point is me yelling, if you're so pissed, do something about it. Right after that, I feel something tug at my shirt. I turn around thinking it's my girlfriend playing a very unfunny joke on me, but she was still downstairs. Something pulled my shirt. After that, I decided it was time to leave for the night. At 6am we get in the car and drive to my mum's house. That car ride was much less hateful and all the bad feelings were gone for a while. I went to work while my girlfriend slept at my mum's place. And when I got off, we went back to her house to check everything. It all seemed fine, except for the one picture of us she had hanging on her wall was knocked to the ground, like something out of a horror movie. But she was too exhausted to care about my safety at that point. And I was so tired, I was willing to let whatever was there kill us, just so that I could get some rest. Two weeks later, we moved out and hadn't had any problems since. I never believed in the paranormal at all until this happened. I still question it. My brain thinks there has to be a logical explanation to it all, and I'm sure there is, but I know she believes, and a piece of me believes that there is something else in that house. From the ages of 10 to 13, I lived in what I like to call the devil slash demon's home, or the playhouse. The neighborhood I lived in, I guess, correlated with it. I would see pitch black figures, either in my peripheral vision or directly in my line of sight. I remember four occurrences of the shadows being straight ahead of me. They were a man pointing a rifle from a deer to my friend and I in a church field. A cat vanishing into thin air as he jumped off a fence, and a doll in the corner of my room, standing and staring at me while I was in bed. And a woman laying right next to me in the same hour as the doll. I was afraid of my closet, because in the ceiling, it had a square cut out that led to the attic. There was no other passage to it, except through that opening. The cutout wasn't perfectly fit, so I could see inside. I tend to investigate what I fear, because I want the relief of knowing that it could be explained. So I obviously stared up there a lot, whenever I absolutely had to open my closet door. One time, I saw a red figure exactly how you would imagine the devil or demon, horns, tail, and all, walk by the window that I could see through the crack. The window had sheer lavender curtains and dim sunlight shining through it. There was no window, and it wouldn't have made sense for there to be a window at all, since it was located in the middle of the house. It was like I was looking into a whole other world. My bedroom door shook back and forth in its frame, and the handle was being turned frantically. It was unlocked, so I knew it wasn't somebody trying to get in. It lasted around 30 seconds, so I had enough time to stare at it from my bed. I called out, Hello? And walked up to it, and waited for it to stop. 
The wood floor creaked when anyone about walked, but there was no noise before and after my door shook. The only people home were my brother and I. His room was right across from mine, so I thought he might be playing a trick on me. I went in to ask, but he said no, and he wasn't lying to me. I could always tell when he'd lie to me, because he couldn't help but smile. This time he looked at me with hostility, like I was crazy. Have you ever felt that a dead relative is watching over you? I felt like it the whole time I was in the house, but rarely when I was anywhere else. During my grandma's funeral, I didn't feel like she was gone. I felt confused as to why everyone was crying as they walked over to see her. When it was my turn, I greeted her and observed her for however long everybody else was doing for, then walked off. No crying, nothing. It's not that I couldn't understand death, but that I felt like whoever was dead was still with us in the playhouse. I constantly felt like it. I was being watched over by my grandmother. Even if she couldn't do anything to protect me from my god-awful family, she was making sure that I was well. Even the animals showed signs that something was there watching us. They wouldn't become hostile. They would just stare at it. I related it to be my grandmother, because she was the only relative to truly love me. I always had a weird feeling about the whole neighborhood, so this wasn't unusual. I also felt like there was a death curse, or a plague. Every pet we ever had in that house, except for my Dashen, died early on, and with no signs of illness beforehand. I was afraid to get an animal, because I knew it was going to die mysteriously, like all the others within a year or so. Either it was a plague, or well, my brother is a true psychopath that likes to poison animals. I had a dream about it once, and that's what happened in it. When I think back to all these occurrences, I keep trying to think that I was hallucinating, since I read that being severely abused could do that to a person's mind. But when I think of any other house that I live in, while still being abused like hell, I never had any strange experiences. All my animals stayed alive except for my poor rat. The poor thing had a swollen purple tongue, and I couldn't figure out the cause of it. Thank God I'm not in that house anymore. It's made me paranoid to any house that I'd lived in after that. After my parents divorced back in 2006, my mum could no longer afford to pay the mortgage on the house which we were living in, so we were forced to move. I was an angry child at the time, angry that we had to move out of this house. I loved that house. My mum and sister fell in love with the house that was across the street from a cemetery. I was terrified of cemeteries at the time, so living across from one was something out of my worst nightmares. We did, however, end up moving in. My mum, my sister, our two dogs and our one cat. Things were quiet for several weeks while living there, and it wasn't until six months later that unexplainable happenings began to occur. Six months in, I woke up to a loud crash and looked over to the side of my bed. My Labrador was lying on the floor having a massive seizure. He never had had a seizure before, so this was terrifying. He had at least three in a row, and that day he was diagnosed with epilepsy. We'd had him for five years, and he had never once had a seizure before, so it was odd that he'd have one now. My sister adopted two kittens, and we had a cat tree that they would sleep on. It sat next to the recliner where I'd sit most of the time, so I could use it as my laptop. One day, 
I was sitting there in the recliner, and her cat, Tigger, was fast asleep on his tree. The house was completely silent. And then suddenly, Tigger shut off the tree like someone had come up from behind him, and screamed as loudly as they could. It kind of reminded me of a scene from Ghost, when Patrick Swayze's character screamed into his cat's face to attack his murderer that was in his house. That cat was freaked out for the rest of the day, and stayed up in my sister's room for the remainder of that day. The family cat, Addix, who never had had a sick day in her life, suddenly had two massive strokes the same night, within 30 minutes of each other, and died in my mum's arms a year after moving in. It wasn't just the animals that were affected though. Whatever lived there came after me. At 3.03am, every night, my dog and I would be in a deep sleep, and at the bottom of the steps, it would sound like my mum stood at the bottom shouting, Nick! And it would wake both of us up. The first couple of times I would go see if my mum would be okay, and she'd be fast asleep. After that, I got into the habit of sleeping with my headphones on, so I didn't have to hear it. But even then, I'd still sometimes wake up to my name being shouted. Things would go missing in my house, not just anyone's things, but mine. I remember clearly that one night I had put my iPod on its charger before I went to bed. When I woke up the next day, my iPod was gone. It was nowhere to be found, and I searched everywhere for it. I gave up trying to find it after about a week, because there was nowhere else to look. Then about a month after it disappeared, I woke up, and the iPod was back on its charger like nothing had happened. I was working a job where I was closing the store almost nightly. So by the time I got home, I would be the only one awake. So I would sit in my living room with my laptop writing, when I would hear a whisper coming from the vents from the basement. It was a full of conversation, and one time the whispers got louder, and so I took off upstairs with my dog. This was constant, until I moved out at 24, and I took my dog with me. The minute we moved out, his seizures stopped. He was a completely different dog. My stuff stopped going missing, and the whispers also stopped. It's been nearly six years since I've lived in that house. I was the only one who believed the house was haunted, and I do bring it up with other people. My mum, my sister, but they still insist that there's nothing wrong. Whatever was living there, I was a target, and so were the animals, and I never want to go back, and I'll never have to, because the house has been sold. I do wonder though, if the current owners experience anything like I did. There were five of us living in this house. One day I got home, and at that time of day when I got home, no one would be there except for me. So I had a computer downstairs that I sat with my back directly towards the chair. All the bedrooms were upstairs, and only one of our roommates had a TV in their room. So I'm sitting there with my headphones on, and I take them off, and I hear some talking. So I figure that my roommate has left his TV on, and I hadn't heard it when I got home. So I start walking towards the stairs, and I'm going to turn it off, because we were all crazy about electricity bills. And I hear like springs on a bed, as if someone is either getting on or off the bed. So I assume, oh okay, my roommate stayed home today, or was either late for work, or something like that. He generally parked in the garage, and I hadn't gone out there since I went through the front door, so I wouldn't have known if he was there or not. So anyway, the bed springs, and the TV sound stops, and I sit down at the bottom of the stairs, and assume he's about to walk out of his room. And I'm waiting for a while, 
and eventually I start feeling weird about the situation. So I walk out to the backyard, because it was where everyone would hang out. So if he went down the stairs, he would walk outside and say bye. I also had another roommate, who would always get home around this time as well. So I was hoping he would come home, because at this point I'm feeling anxious about the whole thing. We had a glass sliding door, and a screen door as well, and we always kept the glass one open, and everyone would just go through the slider door. So I'm in the backyard, as my back is faced away from the door, and I hear as if my roommate was about to walk out the screen door. The screen door made the sound like something had at least touched it, and I felt immediate relief, thinking, cool, my roommate's home. I can't wait to tell him about this stuff. I turn around and no one comes out the screen door. So I look inside and no one's there. So now I'm like, what? So I go around the house and through the side door into the garage to see if his car was even there. And maybe he opened the door into the house from the garage and the wind or something pulled the screen door and it made the noise. But there were no cars inside. So I opened the garage door and no one's home. I'm the only person here. Nothing happened after that, but I called my girlfriend at the time who lived there at the same time just to see what time she'd be coming home, because there was no way I was going to walk out there alone. I stayed in the garage sweeping for three hours, even when it got dark outside. I was not down. So one day at the same house, after the weird door lock morning, perhaps a few weeks later, I'm driving home and my girlfriend is calling me but I'm literally right around the corner so I didn't answer it. Then she immediately calls me again. So now I'm thinking that maybe she wanted me to pick something up before I got home. So I answer it, and I'm about one street away at this point. So I just start speaking and I'm like, hey, I'm right around the corner. And my girlfriend is screaming, crying, and it sounds like she's running. I'm like, what the hell is going on? and she's just screaming my cat's name. So I think, oh God, did my cat run away? Or did she get hit by a car? As I turn the corner, I watch my girlfriend running outside with my cat in her hands and phone in the other, running into the street. She tells me the story once she calms down and says that she was in our bathroom. We always kept one of the doors slid open, covering the other because we also had our dresser inside there too. So it was kind of like a mini room. So she's sitting on the toilet, which faces that closet and says that all of a sudden the closet started shaking violently and she thought that we were having an earthquake. We live in California, so it's not unheard of. Once she realized that nothing else was really shaking, she figured it was our cat that might be messing around in the closet. And once she finished her business, she walked into the closet to grab the cat. But the cat wasn't there. At this point, with how violently the slider doors had shaken, there was no real explanation, rather than maybe an earthquake. She ran out the room and downstairs, found the cat downstairs and grabbed her, and ran outside of the house. We looked up for days to see if there were any earthquake reports remotely near us, but nothing. I checked USGS for hours after the event, and nothing ever came up. I lived in a farm around four years ago. From the moment we moved there, I could tell something was wrong. I felt uneasy in there as if there was something constantly spying on me. A little detail about the place and situation. We didn't technically own the place. It was borrowed from a woman that was trying to sell it. Call it a demo. So we didn't have access to the house and slept on the wooden storage house. 
The farm itself was like this. There was a barbed wire gate that you manually had to move in the entrance. And in front of it was an open empty field with one of those outside washrooms to the right. Passing by it, there was a small group of trees and then the place where we slept. Passing that was the actual house to the left and then the forest. In the forest entrance, there was a tree with a ripped plastic bag tied to its branches, meaning the bag had been tied there for a while. It was still small. And people used to do that here to make marks or something. And right in front of it, there was a mound. Someone buried something there. I moved there with four dogs, plus the dog that already lived there that we took care of. Our routine was to wake up at 5am to go to the city. So I could go to school and my parents could go to work. The first night we stayed there, I noticed my room was the only one in the entire house that didn't have a lock. And I couldn't sleep because of the weird feeling I had. And I stayed up all night and slept on my way to school. Then things got weirder. The door started opening at night. I dismissed it as the wind cliche I know, but it became more frequent and violent. Then still on the first week, I saw it. It was a black humanoid figure with a white face. It was like the white face had empty sockets. And instead of a mouth, just an empty cavity in its face. It stood on my door entrance staring at me. I decided I would not sleep while I lived there. And I would bring myself to move or do anything. So I just kept staring at it to convince myself my mind was playing tricks on me. Then some nights later, it became impossible to pretend because it started moving and doing things. It entered my room tapped on the window. It was a metal window that was right beside my bed and slightly moved things and kept being a general creep. Whenever I shone light on it, it disappeared. But the eerie feeling persisted. I started keeping a flashlight in my room and playing music to keep myself calm and awake. Eventually, I started falling asleep in some days. And in those days, I would wake up with headaches and the feeling my eyes had been pushed into my skull. Every time I awoke, it was in pain. My parents eventually got security cameras because while we were in the city, some people entered the place to go fishing as there was a shortcut to the neighboring farm lake through our forest. This is an important detail. Then one day my aunt went to visit. She had some weird superstitions and said the place had gold buried in it for some reason. She went to the forest and saw the mound under the marked tree I spoke about earlier and decided it was a good idea to dig it up. Bad idea. I was digging it and I need to describe what happened now very well to pass the feeling. So bear with me. There is a certain feeling of digging dirt that differs from rocks or mud or clay. I learned this that day as I dug the hole. Then after going through a small layer of fragmented rock, I hit something soft and resistant that felt like leather. I hit it harder and pushed through it. Immediately after it, there was something hard with a complex and detailed shape. I tried to break through it since my aunt insisted it was a protection for the gold and my parents were just whipping me into helping her. But it was no use and it occupied most of the area of the hole. So we couldn't dig around it. It was like the hole was made specifically to bury it. My aunt then said she would cover the hole. She didn't cover it. And we went home. That night was hell. There was no tapping on the window. There was a strong banging. The thing kept entering my room nonstop. And even the flashlight wasn't working. I had to stay awake feeling everything pressuring me. My door wouldn't close and the thing would make noises and would be there staring at me. Now this is the part that makes the security cameras so important. 
They stopped working the moment it all started. There were four cameras, one pointing towards the farmhouse, one of them pointing to the washroom, one of them that showed my window, and one that pointed towards the forest. That morning I went to check on the camera footage, and all the cameras had stopped working, except the one pointing at the forest. There was only static for the other three. But that one had a small blur. After that night, it never appeared again. I still couldn't sleep because of fear. But it never actually showed up and things got calmer. We moved out some time after that. I keep thinking about it every now and then. Four years later, it was too real. And there were things that were noticed by other people too. I especially keep thinking about the thing we hit while digging and how that night was the worst. I keep asking myself if we found a body or some haunted object that was hidden. Due to my father's work, we were constantly chasing after his jobs, sometimes spending only a few months in a single location. After my father got a new job in this small town, we moved into a rather nice house on a dead end road. It was a large house with wood floors and a generally exceptional feel about it. Glad to have found a nice house in our price range. We didn't really think too much on why it was empty and why the landlords were willing to rent it out for such a very low cost. It would only take a few months before we found out for ourselves what was going on. The haunting started as just a feeling that we kids would get from time to time. At first, it was just a general sense of unease. But this quickly escalated. As time went by, we slowly transformed from simply thinking we were being watched to seeing forms in the corner of our vision. The feeling of being watched had spread into the night at this point, and few of us were able to get a full night's rest. This continued on until we began to see things much closer to the forefront of our vision. And we had started seeing dark forms in the night, scaring us to the point that we'd all sleep on the same bed for a weak sense of security. Then we found the reason for the haunting. My brother and I were cleaning up an old closet that we had simply dumped a bunch of our toys into after we moved in. The bottom of it had a small wall marking into something of a built in toy chest. We finally had some boxes to hold our things and no longer needed to leave them in the closet. As we pulled out our things, we noticed that the carpet was loose. We were kids and we were not very smart. Instead of telling our parents, we just pulled the carpet back, revealing something that none of us would ever forget a tombstone. It was right there with the name and dates already carved into it. Thinking there was someone buried in our closet, we quickly showed the tombstone to our parents. Thankfully, they decided to remove it from the house. And we thought that was it. But the haunting didn't stop. We started having nightmares and sick spells whenever we were alone in the house. And where it went from there, was something a seven year old me couldn't understand. All I knew was fear, as I would awake at all hours of the night to see a dark figure standing over me, watching me sleep. I would cover my head in my sheets and pray to God to protect me. Usually it worked, but sometimes I would lower the sheet to see a dark ghostly face now staring me in the eye, its face inches from my own. Soon, we were all seeing faces in the dark, and we stopped doing things on our own at night. We would share beds, we would never get up or do anything on our own. And often waking up whoever we were sleeping with to go to the bathroom or to get a drink of water. The final straw was the night I was foolishly walking around the house at night during a lightning storm. 
and as I was walking into my room, lightning flashed at just the right moment. And I saw a figure under my bed, staring at me with a grin that literally ran from ear to ear. It's needle like teeth bared for me to see. I screamed in absolute terror. And it would take days for me to be willing to even play in my room again. We removed the bed frames and started sleeping with our mattresses on the floor for protection from whatever it was that I saw. But the nightmares and sightings continued. Thankfully, my father's job moved to a new location, and we were able to leave that house. In just six months, we went from happy to having such a nice home to wanting nothing more than to leave it behind. I will never forget that horror. And it has left permanent scars on my soul. Even to this day, almost 25 years later, I still have nightmares about living in that house. God only knows what monsters were there with us. And just saying this out loud has left my heart pounding with the fear of that memory. Back around 2011, I had a girlfriend, who is now my ex, who really wanted to experience something paranormal. Myself and my family had experiences, as did hers. So now she was stoked about seeing something too. She decided that she wanted to do a really stereotypical thing. Let's go to a graveyard in the early hours of the morning and see if we can catch something on film or audio in a picture. I was against this, because at the time we were living with my father, who was in ill health. I'd always heard it was possible for things to follow you home. So I didn't want to do anything that could make his health worse. However, she was the kind of person that couldn't be talked out of something after making up her mind. Knowing how dangerous an area like this can be in the early hours, I ultimately went with her, as there are a lot of drunks leaving pubs and walking through this area. We spent the better part of three and a half hours wandering around the graveyard before we found absolutely nothing. So we decided to go back home and spent a few hours watching TV before falling asleep. As we went to bed extremely late into the morning, we didn't wake up until around 1130. We sat and spoke about the night before, how it was a shame that nothing happened, and then moved on to talk about our family's experiences. During this time, I started getting dressed. I put on my clothes and was sat on the bottom corner of my bed putting my shoes on. When as we were talking, we heard a familiar crack as the door opened. My girlfriend's face lit up with a shocked expression as she was not dressed. In one single impressive movement, she jumped up and pulled the duvet from underneath her and covered herself with it. I looked over towards the door, puzzled, as we were the only people in the house that could get upstairs, as my dad had extremely bad legs covered in large deep wounds that would not heal. The handle came down and stayed down as the door slowly opened. After about four seconds, the door had opened about three quarters before the handle slowly came back up halfway before snapping back as if someone had let go of it. Slowly it opened all the way and I could see there was nobody on the other side. At this point, I had a huge grin on my face, partially from shock, as I realized something else wasn't right. There was no noise leading up to this. The house is old. The floorboards and staircase are both completely shot. And if someone was heading towards the room, we would hear them without a doubt. Looking at me, she asked, who's there? All I could say was, no one. Eventually, I did leave the room to check the house. It was just the three of us. No one else was there, and my dad, of course, hadn't moved from downstairs. 
Around half an hour of this went by, and I went to our local shop to pick up a few bits. I brought two Rossler burgers as a quick breakfast for us before we went out. My ex stood talking to me in the kitchen as she watched me place the burgers in the microwave, with each on a separate small plate side by side, taking up almost all the room on the base of the microwave. After a minute or so, I looked through the door and saw something I wasn't expecting. The plates that I put in side by side were now stacked on top of each other, right in the middle. I didn't say a word. Blank faced, I pulled out both plates, as they were, and looked at my girlfriend. Her jaw dropped. I know you didn't put them in like that, I saw you, she said. After this, doors would begin to open without anyone being on the other side. This became a common occurrence for six months, and pretty much became a normal part of everyday life. I remember it happening when my friend was there. We sat playing FIFA on the Xbox, when suddenly we heard a crack. My friend looked around and said, Your door just opened. To which I replied, Yeah, it does that. When I was a teenager, my family moved into a new house in Ohio. As soon as we moved in, my mother started saying that she felt the house was haunted, and she could sense a presence there. She said she heard someone call her name, and that she felt someone put a hand on her shoulder. There was one time, she woke up with someone holding her feet down, and she couldn't shake whatever it was and started screaming. She also heard muffled voices. We didn't believe her at all until both my sister and I started experiencing strange things. My first experience was when I was reading a book in my bedroom at 3am. I am a night owl, and it wasn't that unusual. Everyone should have been asleep, but suddenly I heard very faint footsteps right outside my bedroom door. They were too heavy to be my mum's or sister's, so I assumed my dad was walking around checking up on us. I sprinted to the door, and when I opened it, I was shocked to discover the hallway was dark, and no one was up there. Our attic had several feet of fluffy insulation covering the entire area. There was nothing stored there, and at times you could hear steps coming from the attic, running up to the side of the house with the driveway, when someone was pulling up to the house, as if they wanted to see who had arrived. It was almost cool in the daytime, but terrifying at night. There was always something clicking loudly under my bed, as well as in the closet at night. I always tried to convince myself it was air vents. However, all the air vents were on the other side of the bedroom, and never made clicking noises. I sometimes saw an outline of a person, standing next to my bed if my head was covered with a sheet, and when I'd pull it off, there'd be no one there. I'd hear sighs, as if someone was standing right behind me, and there was one occasion where I heard a whisper, Come play. I prayed a lot, and that usually helped. I'd also ask them to quiet down, and that helped too. One time, my boyfriend and I were doing homework in the basement, and heard the garage door open and the voices of my parents in the kitchen. We ran up to say hello, to discover an empty house. There was another time when my boyfriend stayed overnight. He slept in the living room, and in the morning he asked if we were playing a joke on him at night, as he kept hearing a ball bounce on the stairwell leading up to the bedrooms on the second floor, and in the kitchen. But every time he got up to see what was going on, no one was there. I don't think we even owned a ball, and certainly didn't play with one in the house. One time my mum heard a baby cry outside of our house at night. We lived in a safe and perfectly normal suburb, 
and there was no reason a baby would be in our backyard. One day, a lid flew off a cooking pot and got halfway embedded into the kitchen ceiling. It wasn't a pressure cooker, just a regular lid and a pot. Another time we left for a family vacation and my boyfriend was asked to take our paper in. He said he was in the house and decided to make my bed as we left at some ungodly hour like 5 a.m. and I never got the chance to do it. He said at first he got a juice and felt like someone was breathing down his neck. He kept turning around to find no one there then he walked upstairs and while he was making my bed, he felt something grab his leg from underneath the bed. He got freaked and ran out and refused to enter the house again and just diligently hid the papers behind a flower pot outside until we returned. My sister one night awoke to a black caped figure standing silently in her room. She said there was also a bright orb near her window as her window faced the backyard and trees. And being on the second floor, there was no possible source of lights from cars. She covered her head with the blanket. And when she looked out, the figure and orb were still there. She went back under the blanket. And after some time, they were finally gone. Our cat disappeared without a trace someday as well. We are unsure if it's related. My dad was one person who never experienced anything. No voices, no steps, no TVs and radios blasting out on their own. He is hard of hearing, so that could have been a factor. But one thing he can't explain is waking up at 4am next to a lit tea light candle that he swears burnt out at midnight. The candle was right in front of his face, and he's extremely sensitive to light to the point where he covered any electronic lights with napkins as they disturb his sleep. It eventually got so bad that I refused to sleep in my own bedroom, as I could feel someone moving around in the room at night, and I slept in my sister's room. My dad decided to call a medium, and the guy said that there were five spirits in the house, a boy, an old lady, a couple, and a very angry man. He gave us a giant candle with a cross and said to burn it in the bedroom of the youngest child, which was now also my bedroom where I slept in a sofa chair. The candle was in a big glass jar and was hefty. All night it kept shaking and the glass kept making clicking noises against the counter it stood on. We were also to tell the spirits that this was our house now and they needed to go to the light. Things improved after the visit, and shortly after I moved out to attend college, where I slept with the lights on, although I never experienced any paranormal activity in my apartment there. After college, I never stayed in the house for longer than a few days, always sleeping with the lights on, as the creepy feeling remained despite nothing noticeable happening anymore. Eventually, my parents sold the house. I lived on this huge old house between the ages of nine and 13. It was just me and my dad most of the time. A lot of stuff happened in this house, but one of the worst was when I was about 10. I was always too scared to sleep upstairs because it had always freaked me out and it was pretty loud up there. But one time, my dad finally made me sleep in my room on the third story. I was absolutely terrified. So I decided to read a book until I was sleepy enough to pass out. So I'm sitting there with my lamp on reading a book. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this huge tarantula crawling up my bed sheets. So I freak out and threw my blankets off. After shaking them around a bit, I couldn't find anything. So I assumed I'd imagined it, and I lay back on the bed again to read. I was getting a bit sleepy, when I saw some slight movement out of the corner of my eye, 
and I looked up from my book to see a young girl in a white nightdress standing at my door, watching me. I was kind of paralyzed with fear and didn't know what to do. And I thought I'd just cover my face with the book. And then when I looked again, she was gone. After that, it was a year or so before I slept in my room upstairs again. But when I did, I started noticing more and more things. There was a balcony with a locked door, which also had one of those latches that you had to turn and then slide across. It was super old and rusty, and my dad could barely get it open sometimes. But I've lost count of the number of times I've walked upstairs and seen that door wide open, or gone to sleep with it locked, and then being awoken to the sound of it slamming open. The most messed up thing that happened is one summer my dad finally decided to sell the house, but the housing market was trash so no one would buy it. And we kept having to have open houses where people would come over and the realtor would show them round. We used to go to our neighbor's house across the road and wait for them to finish. Anyway, one day we're at our neighbor's house just watching and we suddenly see this young lady run out of the house and sit down with her head in her hands. Her husband runs out afterwards and kind of talks to the realtor a bit, and then they both get in the car and drive off. So obviously once everyone left, we asked the realtor what had happened. Apparently, the couple had been looking around upstairs and wandered into the bathroom where they'd seen a naked girl with wet hair staring at them in a mirror. This shook me up pretty badly, because now it wasn't just me who had seen stuff. We mentioned this to a few of our neighbors, and they all kind of laughed it off and thought it was funny. But there was one neighbor, this old guy, who had lived in the neighborhood for ages, who was really freaked out, and told us the story. Apparently, there was a guy who spent years and years building the house for his family, working on it every day until it was finished. The day after everyone was moved in, the guy had a heart attack on the front lawn and passed away. This messed up his family pretty bad, in particular his daughter, who ended up killing herself in the upstairs bathroom. I live in a house in the middle of nowhere, deep in the woods. So it's always had that potential to be creepy, especially at night when all the deers, coyotes and other animals are making noises in the woods. The house was built about 13 years ago by my family. So we are the only ones to have lived in it. I don't know anything about the property other than it's in the country by some cornfields and a few other houses. Ever since I was a kid, there has been one room in the house that has always given me a weird feeling when I was in there by myself. And that is my mum and my stepdad's room. Anytime I was in there alone, I just felt odd, like I was on edge. However, this could just be because my mum never really liked me in her room. It is just a feeling of almost being watched or that I needed to hurry out of there. Like I said, it could be because of my mum's rule, so I'm automatically assuming this means my house is haunted. On Tuesday, I was home alone, no pets, nothing. And I was getting ready to go out. My mum has this hair product in her bathroom, which is attached to her bedroom that I love. So I stroll over down the hall in order to obtain some. As I was styling my hair, I hear a noise, like a smacking sound. I'm 100% certain of what I heard, as this sounded as if someone took their open bare hand and hit it off the wall three times. The sound seemed to have come from around where the door to her room is, or from the hallway where it opens up to a large entryway, because the smacks did not seem muffled, 
so it didn't sound like it was coming from another room, the attic, or any other part of the house. I immediately froze, because I thought I was busted by my mum or stepdad for stealing some product, and they were messing with me, or someone was knocking on the door to the house. I almost immediately left the bathroom and peered around her door down to the entryway to look at the door, which has a large glass panel. I saw no one standing there. I ran downstairs quickly to see if someone was pulling out of our driveway, like UPS or FedEx or perhaps even Jehovah's Witnesses, but there was no one leaving. We have a long driveway too, so it's not like someone could pull out quickly. Now at this point, I obviously start to freak out, and every horror movie I have seen and story I had read had come to mind. I grabbed my things to finish getting ready at my friend's house and left. I spent at least 15 minutes getting my things together, and in that time, nothing else happened. But as I said, as soon as I had my things, I ran to my car and left. On a lighter note, I was caught by our security camera running to my car, in my PJ tops and shorts, with Uggs on my feet and crying. After the fact, it was kind of funny, but I was definitely terrified. For a long time now, my mum and stepdad have not gotten along. For years, there was almost constant tension of arguments, and that is the room where they both had to sleep together. However, they have recently decided to separate, so the arguments have all but subsided. My question is, could the years of hate, tension, sadness and anger build up to create or invite something into the home? If this were the case, why was it showing itself now, when things are finally coming to a resolution, with both of them looking for new places to live? I of course called my stepdad in tears, suggesting a person could have even have broken in, as I was trying to rationalise it. He said he thought it could be a mouse in the attic. We live next to a field, remember? A loose side panel on the house from recent extreme winds, or ice from the ice machine in the kitchen. Now bear in mind I've heard all these noises before, I know what they sound like, and I don't think that they're the case. He checked the cameras, and I was the only person to enter and leave. Of course, everyone thinks I'm overreacting, but I am confident in what I heard, and the fact that it gave me chills. I moved to Prague in the Czech Republic, to work as a private teacher, after I figured that the labour situation was far from good in my home country of Belgium for recent graduates. My girlfriend and I are renting an apartment in Hradkanskra. That area is fairly close from Prague Castle. It is a duplex located on the last floor of the building, which must be around 80 to 100 years old. However, the apartment where we live has only been inhabited for 20 years, since it used to be the attic of the building. We'd lived there for five months. It's quite modern and bright, nothing to be scared of. However, last month, I offered to keep the dog of one of my students, a lovely young fox terrier, only for three weeks while she was out of the country. I love dogs, but living on the sixth floor without elevators is a deal breaker for owning one permanently. The first night was terrible. The dog couldn't stop whining because it was so used to sleeping in the same bed as its owner but that isn't too much of a thing, mostly my girlfriend in all honesty. To be able to get some sleep and reassure the dog, I went down and slept on the couch. The dog was silent for the rest of the night, and I woke up in the early hours at around 6 or 7. That's when I heard what I thought to be my girlfriend walking down the wooden stairs. I heard the cracking of wood, and light steps going towards the couch. I was half awoken, but frankly felt that it was too early to show it and start conversation. That's when I felt her sitting on the couch and leaning on me, and when I decided it would be time to turn around and kiss her hello. It's an L-shaped sofa, and I was lying on the smaller part, but when I turn around, there was nothing. 
I listened intently and could hear her upstairs gently snoring. Obviously I freaked because I have a history of sleep paralysis and I hate it when it happens. And so I thought for the next day that that was it, sleep paralysis. I hate it, but at least I know it's nothing hostile. A few days later, my mum and my cousin came to visit us in Prague and spend Christmas holiday together. They slept on the same sofa, and I was really happy because the dog wouldn't whine anymore as it was not alone downstairs during the night. After their first night, we woke up, and my mum asked who went to the toilet in the early morning. I didn't, neither did my girlfriend, as far as she said. My mum then told me that in the early morning at around six or seven, she heard one of us go to the stairs, walk towards the bathroom which is after the corridor between the couch and the entrance, and stop for a few seconds before the couch. She said she felt like she was being watched, just like I had before, but that it was a bit early to wake up and chat. It's only after we told her about my first experience that she became pale and asked if we were pulling her leg. We weren't. A few days pass and my mum and cousin return to Belgium. My girlfriend goes to France to celebrate her mother's 50th birthday and I decided because I did not feel too courageous about being home alone after these experiences to let the dog come up with me. Two nights ago, I was sleeping on my stomach. The dog was by my side and I again in the early morning heard someone either sighing or laughing lightly. I thought it might have been a sleep hallucination, but the dog got up with its ears all pointy as if they were trying to hear where the noise was coming from. The dog kept looking in the void towards the direction where I thought the noise had come from a few seconds prior. Now the dog has returned to its family and I'm home alone until Saturday. I have never wanted my girlfriend to be back more than now. I live in quite a rural region of Germany. Many castles, fields, wineries, and bits of history splattered around my surroundings. Personally, I live in a house that was built around the 50s or 60s. It's fairly old and is already getting cracks in the walls, with mold appearing in several spots with high humidity, which we are obviously trying to get rid of, but it's easier said than done as it reappears all the time, especially during winter. I don't know that much about my house's history, as it's just an old house like many others in this village. The only remarkable feature about my house being the fact that the former mayor of this village lived here. Now I won't start retelling stories from my childhood, as I was a generally anxious kid who'll get startled by the simplest of things being introverted and into art. I'd also have a huge imagination, so I might as well have made some things up. Anyway, it began with simple things that many other people experienced, such as seeing shadow people, dark, faint silhouettes right in the corner of my viewing area. They could be moving or standing there. Nothing to be scared of when you get used to it though, though I did feel uneasy while being home alone. There were other occasions where I would hear faint voices. They'd usually be calling out my name, which does get awkward when I start asking my family if they were calling me to find out that they were not. One of the more scary instances was when I heard, go away, late in the night, but perhaps I was just tired. But voices are voices and shadows are shadows. Time to get to the more interesting stuff. Certain lights can sometimes turn on without anyone being there and turn off after a while. Others begin to flicker and stop at some point. The latter especially happening very often recently. Certain objects can also sometimes fall down or be misplaced. Another incident involving a light did actually scare the living crap out of me as it occurred late at night while I was up. It was the mirror in front of my bed, 
Maybe it was the mirror in front of my bed, maybe the old screws. But as I'm looking at my own reflection, I heard a loud crash as the ceiling lamp came crashing down onto the ground, nearly giving me cardiac arrest. But the cherry on top is what happened here. We used to have this project at our school where physics students could build a radio. My older brother being good in physics decided to build such a radio as well, and it worked. However, it did end up in the back of our wardrobe, as back then we shared a room and stayed there for quite a while. It got quite dusty. So imagine a good and sunny day, my family being at home, and I'm spending my time in my room playing games on my bed. I look in the already mentioned mirror, and the radio starts shrieking with sound. I panic and run into the living room asking the rest of my family if they heard it. And hell, their confused and perplexed faces did. They asked me whether or not I made that noise, which I obviously didn't. And so I picked up the small radio and brought it into the living room. My brother tells me to open it, as it's powered by batteries. There were no batteries though. It was in fact, not intact. My mum being a superstitious woman, tells me to put it away in the attic, which I did. My younger sister is currently taking classes with the same teachers I used to have. And being a good brother, I did keep all the exams and tests I had, so she could use them to prepare herself for her impending examinations. And where did I keep them? The attic. The radio started screeching again, as my sister was looking for the papers, the same freaking radio. Other than that, it might be worth mentioning that I got cats two years ago. And they do sometimes stop mid walk and stare into nothing like walls or hallways. One of them does even start to growl, which is also unsettling. These events happened four years ago. I'll start off by saying my name is Alan. And my best friend's name is Matt. Matt and I had been friends for seven years at this point. Matt's dad lets us usually do whatever we wanted. I normally went to Matt's house and partied every Friday night. We were in our early 20s in a shithole town in southern Tennessee. So what better things were there to do besides getting wrecked? The older Matt and I got the more we realized we loved paranormal investigation shows. We shared experiences we had as children. The more we talked, the more we built up our egos, as if we didn't want to be scared of anything as a future paranormal investigator. Matt's family moved across town, and I spent the day slash evening helping them move. It was late spring and early summer at the time, so it was hot enough for all night porch sitting. One evening we decided to have a bonfire and drink a beer. Around 8pm, we put the fire out and Matt's dad left. Being big guys, we had gotten hot and taken our shirts off, and we were watching TV in the living room. We heard Matt's dog Sparky barking towards the back of the house. Sparky would bark at anything, so we were like, eh, whatever. The barking, however, got louder and more fear-based. We found Sparky in the bathroom barking at the toilet. Dumb dog, Matt said. Matt went back into the living room and I followed. The barking continued to get louder with anger and fear. I asked Matt, what the hell is he barking at? We found him a few feet off the back door snarling at the door. We got a bit concerned and thought maybe this was something. I asked Matt if his dad knew anything about the house and he said no, but I had brought my camera. So he cracked a smile and we decided to investigate. We went through the house doing everything we'd seen on the ghost TV shows. We got nothing. I said Sparky was barking at the back and out we went. We took off our belts and held them 
like they would be some kind of defensive weapon. When presented with a real-life situation, those egos had shriveled up like raisins. I told him to take the back corner of the house and cover me as I ran to the unattached sheds behind the wall. It was about midnight, and the small backyard connected to the woods, so it was pitch black dark. I had gotten ballsy, so I started imitating that famous ghost hunter, Zack. If you have any balls, show yourself, I shouted, then proceeded to say, don't be a pussy. No sooner had the words left my lips, I felt a presence come up on me. It hit me with such a force, it was hard enough to knock over my six foot four, 300 pounds self. At this point, Matt had already taken off running. I jumped up and looked behind me and saw the outline of a dark entity at least my height with glowing yellow eyes looking at me out of the tree line. I was frozen as we made eye contact. It was as if it were trying to eat me through my eyes. I snapped out of the frozen state when I heard Matt shout to run. I hopped onto my feet as it glided towards me and ran for the front door. I rounded the front porch so fast I had to grab the porch support post to spin up to the porch. We hid in Matt's room until his dad returned home. We told him what happened, and he went on to tell us about the previous tenants in the land. He had recently found out that not only did the guy that lived here before die in the back room, but also practice weird rituals on the land. We made it through that night, but never again did I feel comfortable there. It was as if I were being watched, like a hunter watching its prey. They moved again not long afterwards, and I always try and avoid the road which that house is on. My grandma's house has always been a little strange. It's one of those buildings where, although it appears homely and a nice place, there's just something really wrong as soon as you step in. It's kind of like feeling, well, it's difficult to explain. Maybe kind of like the atmosphere is thick and heavy. Anyway. My grandma has lived in this house for a long time, and her mother lived in the house before that. So my grandma was actually born in the house and still lives there, but even she sometimes gets scared. My family, including myself, have all experienced something. I'll start off with my dad's experiences, since he lived there. His room was really small, and had no windows and was right within the middle of the house. While he lived there, he used to have a recurring nightmare about this man standing in the dark waiting for him. Then one night, he woke up and the man was actually there. He didn't dare move and just pretended to sleep so that he would have no idea if or when it disappeared. He had various other experiences too, but that was the most significant. My experience I had when I was sat in one of her two living rooms with everyone who was at the house. I'm not really into speaking with a lot of people, so I just kind of sat letting my gaze wander off. Then I saw the shadow of someone in the other room, and I thought there was someone there so I called out to them. But it moved away, and when I looked, there was no one there. I have to admit that that one is very easily explained due to how many ornaments and figures my grandma has that could have caused a trick of the light. The next one is much scarier. To get to the bathroom in my grandma's house, you have to walk through one living room, through the kitchen, which is set out like a big corridor, and through a hallway which has a door to the basement stairs. Note, this is always kept locked. And then you reach the bathroom doors. I had just been to the bathroom and was not about to walk back 
and when I was halfway through the kitchen, I heard a door creak open, and, as I went to look back, it was the door to the basement stairs. Now this door is always kept locked, so you can imagine how surprised I was to see a heavy wooden door that had previously been locked swing open. There was no wind or anything, and all the windows were closed, and even if it was open, it was really old and a heavy door, and took a hell of a lot of force to open. I went back and shut the door, trying not to look down, and left because I didn't want my grandma to think I was snooping around her house. My grandparents themselves had also had experiences in there. One experience was how she has some little metal balls in a cabinet in one of her living rooms. One day they were both in the other living room, when they heard the bells ringing in the other room. They went through thinking that a family member had arrived, and was just joking with them or something. But there was nobody there, and the bells were out of the cabinet and on the table. I strongly believe that these are experiences linked with one thing, a Ouija board. When my grandma was younger and lived, like I said, in the same house, she was playing with a Ouija board, and her six sisters were too, in the basement. This is as much of the story as I could actually get out of her because she told us all that she was too scared to tell us the rest and refused to say. I strongly believe that whatever happened was so bad and so scary that I'll never find out. And perhaps I don't want to. So, I'm pretty sure I accidentally invited something into my house. I named it the Orla after the short story by Guy de Malpont, where a guy does the same. It started when I lost my keys. A bunch of us were at a friend's house in a small village outside of town. They were in a band together, and I was their default roadie slash tag along, and we performed at the local venue that evening. Since his house was closest to the place, we stayed over there. We were probably about 18 to 19 years old at the time, and we were a rowdy bunch. So when our friend's mum, whose house it was, asked us to steal a roll-up carpet that she liked the look of from a garage down the street, we were up for it. The great carpet robbery went off without a hitch, right up until we were jogging back up the hill to the house with this thing on our shoulders. That was when the button on my trousers broke and my trousers fell. I tripped over them and the contents of my pockets went flying into the night. I found my wallet and phone, but my keys were nowhere to be seen, and I was fearful that an extended search might lead to us getting caught, so I had to give them up as lost forever on some country road in the middle of nowhere. Two weeks later, I was reading in bed when I heard them fall. I had a half attic conversion, which was a pretty big space. The rest of the floor was taken up by a spare room with a little storage space left over in the ceiling above it. There was no furniture in the middle of my room for the keys to have fallen from, let alone a way for them to have been there since I lost them about 12 miles away in the aforementioned middle of nowhere. Yet there they were, right in the middle of my carpet, and I heard them land there. After this, strange things started to happen around the house. I'd hear things in the spare room next to me, like someone moving around, but there'd be no one there when I'd check. I'd wake up to find my empty glasses beside the bed, despite being certain I hadn't drunk any of it, and my computer would randomly turn itself on in the night, waking me up with the sudden whir of its fan. One morning I was awoken by some baby birds tweeting loudly somewhere in my ceiling. I had noticed a bird coming and going outside my window, and it had obviously found a way into the space between my ceiling and the outside tiles of the roof. Just as I was contemplating how the hell I was going to deal with this, there was a loud honest-to-god snarl and an equally loud bang on the roof. 
The tweeting stopped instantly, and I never heard it again. The snarl was like a dog or something, full-throated and furious. The bang was like someone slamming a fist onto a table. Another instance happened while I was at work on a Saturday morning. There was no one in the house save my girlfriend who was having a lie-in. She was on her side facing away from the bedroom door when something sat on the other side of the bed. She felt the mattress go down with the weight of whatever it was, and she froze. She didn't dare move or open her eyes. After a minute or two, the weight lifted, and she was gone. When she eventually got the courage to look around, there was no one there. She was so freaked out she rang me at work to tell me about it, and then left the house to spend the day in town until I got home. So yeah, I accidentally gave some entity keys to my place, and it took that as an invitation, and moved into my spare room. It hasn't done anything hostile so far. In fact, an argument could be made that it's trying to be helpful, but nonetheless, still freaky as hell. To preface this a little, I've never had any encounters in any other room in my house before. My parents live in their semi-detached house and have done for as long as I can remember. My parents, myself, and my two older sisters lived there together. It was only a three bedroom house. So for a while, when I was really young, I would sleep in my parents' room, which was the biggest room, and my sisters separate in the smallest and medium rooms. I remember never being scared of the dark at this time, I wasn't bothered by anything at night. I would have thought this was maybe because I had my parents in there to keep me safe. Cut to a few years later, we all switch rooms. I get the smallest room, and my parents got the medium room, and my sisters now shared the biggest. Again, never bothered about the dark. Walking around at night, going to bed by myself. My sisters start to move out. So my parents have the big room again, and I get the medium room, while the smallest is turned into a nursery for my upcoming little brother. I stayed in this medium bedroom for the rest of my time at home, before I moved out. Just another thing about this room, it had the hatch to the attic in it. I was never allowed up there because it was too small according to my parents, despite me being desperately curious to see what was up there. And my bedroom was directly opposite the stairs. This is just for added information. This is when I found out I have a fear of the dark, or so I thought. For years I was terrified of the dark, right up until I was 17. To me, this seems like a long time to be scared. But I quickly realized it wasn't the dark I was afraid of just something that was in my room. At night, I would be so anxious to go to bed. I wouldn't put my hand at the top of the stair rail because I swore something would touch my hand. My mind would always go to a long fingered skinny hand that would lie on top of my own. I never saw this happen, only felt something on the back of my hand and that image would project immediately into my mind. I could never look into my own room, walking up the stairs for the horrible feeling that something was staring right back, but I never saw eyes. I would hate getting up in the middle of the night if I were thirsty or whatever in fear of this presence. The kind of keep your feet under the blankets or the monster will get you feeling. Again, I've never seen this thing, but whenever I would feel the presence of it near, an image of its long, thin hand, or a black mass would appear in my head. It never had a face, always just a dark mass with long arms and hands and a head. Fast forward to me turning 17. I still had this fear of this presence. My health took a turn for the worse, and I ended up in the hospital for a while. 
I came back and the feeling was different. I felt calmer in my room. The presence was still there, and on a night, I could still feel the hand on mine. It was like I understood it wasn't there to hurt me, but it didn't feel like there was much reason for it to be there. I never felt this way about any other room. When I moved out at 21, my last night at my parents, there was a sense of warmth in the room, and the presence was really calm. I felt the need to thank it for being there for me. It was such a strange experience, like a weight had been lifted. My little brother has now moved into the room, and I now feel like I can't enter. The doors to the room are always open in my parents' house. But I will be asked frequently to go get things from various rooms and stuff. But in my previous room, slash now my little brother's room, there's a presence again. It's almost like it looked after me in that room, and then I left, and now it's attached to my brother. I can almost feel it around him when he's there. It still just stays in that room. It never leaves, and never feels like this anywhere else. I'm not really sure what this is. It never seemed to be a person or human. Has anyone else had an experience like this? I'd love to talk about it and know more. And why was it only attached to that one room? Out of high school, I worked at a cute little shop that sold gift baskets, goodies, and all sorts of home decor. This was before Big Box Hobby Lobby, and at the time, the store was one of the most popular places to go in town to get cute things for your house, or great gifts for people. The store was actually located in one of the oldest houses in the area. All the stores around there were actually houses at one time and it became this cute, quaint shopping area. For a long time after I started, none of the other workers discussed that the house slash shop was haunted. I don't think they were purposefully keeping it from me, it just didn't come up. The shop slash house was a two-story, with a basement and attic as well. We always stayed open until 7.30pm during the week and there were always two closers for safety. When closing up, the front doors were locked to prevent any customers from coming in, and you can believe we locked that up on the dot so that we could clean up, balance the register, and get the heck out of there. There was a back door, but we kept that locked too. Those are the only two ways in and out of the house slash door. On the night something happened to my friend Amanda and I, we were closing, and the front door was locked up. We're cleaning, doing our thing as normal, and we're about to go, and had walked through the shop top to bottom, turning off all the lights, and we're standing at the back door, when out of nowhere, we heard the most evil laugh I've ever heard in my entire life. We both freak out, grab each other, and did the thing that you shouldn't do in every horror movie which is run to the basement. In my defense, that's where the phone was. We ran back upstairs, busted out the back door and called the cops. We called the owners too. They showed up and cleared the place and were more than understanding and indicated they got calls to old houses all the time. The owner's husband shows up and he was clearly perturbed at us for having called the cops and said that we should have called him first and that we're just a bunch of silly girls. However, he then begins to proceed to tell us a story about how when he was doing book work one evening in the basement, he heard voices upstairs. So he went up to investigate, thinking his wife and daughter had stopped by. He got up, and the voices stopped. So he went back downstairs, and got back to work. He said he then heard them again, and returned to the upstairs part, and this time the conversation continued while he was standing there, and he himself skedaddled out of there. He never did tell us what he overheard specifically. Obviously, the story got out amongst the staff about our experience, and people started talking about theirs. Someone told us they saw jelly jars flying right off the shelf, 
Another co-worker told us she would be balancing the register and she could hear furniture upstairs being dragged back and forth when the shop was totally devoid of customers and her closing partner was in the back cleaning up. One of the managers told us that frequently when opening in the morning, she would go upstairs to turn on all the lights and would hear sounds of little girls playing in what would have been one of the house's bedrooms. The husband and wife would get very upset if you referred to what was going on in the house slash shop as a haunting or a ghost. She was a woman of great faith and she would always say that they were her angels. I can honestly say nothing further ever happened to me when I was working there, but it was totally creepy afterwards, especially to turn the lights off upstairs or having to go to the attic and or basement. Follow up to this story, here I am almost 20 years later, and I live across the street from someone who now owns the building and has a different shop in it. The next time I catch her, I'm going to try and not look crazy and just ask her if she's experienced anything there. To start, I just want to say that I've never been the type of person that gets caught up in the idea of paranormal activities or ghost stories. To me, even at a young age, those types of stories just seemed completely unbelievable, and I could never take them seriously. With that being said, what I'm about to tell you is something that happened to me a few years ago that pretty much changed all of that. It's not an overly scary story, but I think the simplicity of it is what creeped me out as much as it did. My mom was in the real estate business, which often required her to check out houses on her own before taking customers with her. She would usually just do this on her own, but every once in a while she would take me. Well, this house comes on the market that many other agents apparently say is haunted, and my mum figured she'd take me along. I'll be honest, the house was pretty creepy. It was completely covered in vines. It was an old house, not really a big deal, nor out of the ordinary. We go in and look around the first floor, and for the most part, it seems like most houses she takes me to. Still furnished, and has that smell that a house has when it's been empty for a while. The first thing that struck me as a little bit odd was that they had one of those old style box TVs, and it was playing some old black and white World War II documentary, and it just made the house seem really old and gloomy. We eventually made our way upstairs to look at the bedrooms. The second floor was set up so that there was one long hallway with two or three doors staggered down its length. The first room was normal enough, but as we got to the second room, we saw it was completely full of stuffed animals and not the toys, but a whole room dedicated to real stuffed animals. Even though I thought that was pretty strange, the room was fine besides it. Pretty neat, with nothing out of place. Wanting to get out of the room, we went down the hallway to check out the final bedroom, which again was fine. As we're making our way back downstairs, for some reason we pass the second room. I look back and immediately stop in my tracks because there was now a chair directly in the centre of the room. We were both positive it wasn't there before, since we have literally walked into it just moments ago. But nevertheless, there it was, sitting directly in the middle of the room, like it was meant to be there. Obviously, we got out of the house pretty quickly after seeing that. It was something so simple. But what really got to me was that there was no explanation for it. We were the only two in the house, 
and neither of us went on our own to check it out without the other. So how the hell does a chair randomly move in arguably the weirdest room in the entire house? I consider myself a pretty logical person and the fact that I can't think of a single explanation for what happened is why thinking about that house still bothers me so many years later. On a side note, in the few years after we looked at the house, it has sold five or six times with almost all the homeowners saying strange things would happen when they were in the house. Almost like someone didn't want them living there. Growing up, we moved every year. I can say that in my life I have lived in at least 20 homes. Only one of them I actually experienced anything in. This would have been in fifth grade, so I was probably around 10. And I had two younger brothers who were around four and six, and my parents. The house was just a simple one story in a normal neighborhood built in the 70s. This was 1999. So none of the houses were terribly old, some even renovated. It was a hit and miss middle class family neighborhood. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary at first. My parents both worked during the day, so since my brothers didn't yet go to school full time, my grandma who also lived in the neighborhood would take care of them during the day, and I went home after school. As I was the last one to leave in the morning, I knew to turn everything off and lock up before I went to school. One day, I came home to find the shower was running. I thought it was weird, but didn't dwell on it much further, as I wanted to drop my stuff off and get back outside. Then it happened again for the next few days. I went around and checked all of the doors and windows, but everything was locked. I told my mum about it, but she kind of brushed it off. I would find out later that she brushed it off because she didn't want anything involved in the paranormal about the house. A little bit later, I was laying in bed, starting to fall asleep, when I felt something crawling on me. It felt like a light-footed cat over my sheets. I was too afraid to look, so I just lay there while this thing crawled across my bed, on and off of me. I never did look at it. This being an older house, the registers were on the floor, and I didn't sleep with a window open or a fan on so it wasn't when blowing my blanket around. One thing I've never been able to figure out is how my little brother's Mickey Mouse toy would work with no batteries. I mean, it's not like we took them out and it would work for an hour. This thing had no batteries for months and continued to function fully. This same little brother was also caught by my mum multiple times talking to himself in his room. When my mum would ask him who he was talking to, he would simply reply with, the old man. Whatever, kids have imaginary friends. But one night I heard hissing. I got up and looked out my door to see my little brother hissing like a cat at the top of the fridge. I went and got my mum, who rushed out of bed and kept telling him to stop. She started crying, and my dad rushed into the kitchen and finally started shaking him. He would not break his eyes from the top of the fridge. Finally, my dad literally shook him out of it, and he looked at my dad with the biggest smile and said something along the lines of, he's gone now, and started laughing. We only lived in that house for a few more months after that. But the one other incident I will bring up is when my family went out to dinner and run errands one night. I was eating at a friend's house and didn't want to go so I went home after dinner around eight, as they still weren't home. It was dark out by now, so I went inside and turned on the TV. I was sitting there for a while when I thought I heard whispering. I couldn't make out what it was, but didn't care. I just wanted to ignore it so it would go away. It came to a point in lull in between the TV, where the show ends and before the commercial begins and I heard it clearly. Hey. It was so close to my right ear, 
that it could have been a person. I felt the breath on the side of my face. I booked it out the door and sat outside until my parents got home. Not wanting to scare anyone, I told them I was outside watching the fireflies, and I got yelled at for leaving the TV and lights on while being outside. Again, 20 plus homes and only one with paranormal activity. There were always little things that would happen, lights would turn on and off, some light voices and shadows coming from the corner of your eye. It certainly creeped me out, and I'm glad that we no longer reside there. When my mum got remarried, we moved into a small one-story house. She married a man who my sister and I had only met twice before, and they had only been dating six months before getting married. Even at 10 years old, I felt that it was quite a short amount of time to be marrying someone you'd only just dated a little bit. It was a house located on Nevada Street. It seemed fine at first, but I soon came to realize how unsettling it became. When my sister and I debated over who got the top bunk of our new rooms, we played rock, paper, scissors. I was victorious and rubbed it in her face. I enjoyed my top bunk that day, at least until night came. I don't remember how soon after moving in that it happened, but it wasn't too long, maybe less than a month, maybe two weeks. But I woke up in the middle of the night to loud thumps on the ceiling, like heavy boots walking right over my head. I was petrified. My body couldn't move because I was scared stiff. I just shut my eyes closed. Some nights it didn't sound like heavy boots. It sounded like little feet running across the ceiling. Just small thuds and then a boom. The sound of a small boy crashing to the floor of the ceiling. I would still wake up and be petrified. I tried telling my mum, but she shrugged it off as a nightmare. And I slept with the lights on since. We had an old fat computer in the basement like the ones in the 1990s before flat max were a thing. The basement was nice, the ceiling was done and there was a carpet. It was inviting. But man, did I get real heebie-jeebies down there. Just the feeling of always being watched and stared at. I was always down there downloading my favorite music onto CDs or playing pinball. At the time, I had a pet named Snickers who would always growl or bark at the walls. At first, I thought she was just being a dumb dog. Eventually, she started growling at me as I was sitting at the computer desk, growling and backing away. A chill crawled down my spine when I realized that she was barking at the space under the desk, right where I was sitting. Needless to say, I darted out of there immediately. I had always tried to avoid the basement because I swear when I'm down there, there's something peeking around the corner looking at me. I started to see more things, but as the years flew by, I didn't care anymore. From white shadows walking through the hallway to black figures climbing the walls, my mum wasn't listening anymore and could care less about what I had to say. So I just tried to ignore it. The thumps at night were still happening, and the feeling of being watched never went away. The thing that scared me the most was when I was 13. I laid on my parents' bed as my mum was using the bathroom. I got to play on her flip phone, and I was excited. I relaxed and played Tetris while waiting for my mum to come out. All of a sudden, something strong and powerful decided to kick the bed, making it slightly move. I could see ripples from where it was hit. I was absolutely scared out my skin, and I jumped out. I bolted to the bathroom, and my mum had locked the doors. I began pounding and begging my mum to let me in almost in tears. She begrudgingly opened it and of course told me that it could have just been a spring in the bed, popping. The Nevada house always carried this strong negative aura, evil almost. 
My stepfather and mother argued constantly, leading to him beating her and verbally and emotionally abusing us. It was like this entity thrived off it. We eventually moved out into a bigger four bedroom house with two levels. Walking into that house was like a breath of fresh air. No more thumps in the night, no more constantly feeling like I was being watched everywhere I went. It was relieving. My stepdad continued the abuse though. He was just a piece of crap that acted like a walking negative energy battery for any entities. When I was 14, my family and some of our friends went to the Myrtle Plantation in St. Francisville. That was a terrifying experience. When we got there, I felt like this shroud engulfed me. Before our tour, we were walking around and I heard, where's Cornelia? And just thought it was my mum's friend asking about her kid. And maybe I heard her wrong. Her kid's name was Cameron. But when I asked her husband where she was, he said she went to the bathroom inside. When the tour began, I kept feeling distracted like I was dreaming. I was barely listening until our tour guide told us about the owners and the slaves that killed her master's family by accident. Chloe wanted to give her mistress and her children food poisoning and accidentally killed them. One of their children's names was Cornelia and they were buried where I had heard the voice. I had to ask the tour guide twice before I could believe it. Then towards the end of the tour, we were taken to the trees in front of the house where they hung slaves. I remember walking to the tree line and suddenly feeling as if no one was with me. And I saw flashes of people hanging there and I heard weeping. I almost passed out and told my mum I needed to sit down. So she walked with me to a bench near the house. When she asked me what was wrong, I told her and began to cry. That evening, we all went to this Mexican restaurant. I couldn't eat because the food was making my mouth hurt like I had an ulcer. And I went to the restroom to find two sores in my mouth. Then that night at the hotel room, I woke up to the feeling of someone watching me. And I see this black shadow figure near the foot of the bed. I had to turn on the bathroom light just to go back to sleep. After the tour, they allow you to go around and take pictures of the outside of the house. The only photos they allow of the inside are of this mirror that supposedly the souls of the mistress and her children are stuck in. My mum took a ton of pictures on the outside and we didn't look through them until we got home. We actually captured something in the photo. My mum didn't notice it, but when I looked, I found her, Chloe the slave that accidentally killed her mistress and the children. She was standing behind my mum in the picture. My mum had taken a close photo of the window trying to get a photo of the inside of the house. And you can clearly see my mum's reflection. And then standing behind her, a figure wearing a turban on her head and period clothing. She had no face. My mum had taken four photos of the window. In the first, you can see my brother standing behind my mum and the chairs on the porch. The second is the same. The third is the one with her standing behind my mum. And the fourth is the same as the first two. It freaked me the hell out. My mum also took a few of the mirror as well. In the reflection, you can see all of us, my sister and her friends up front, both with white shirts. But in the reflection, there are also three black orbs. You can see them clearly because of my sister and her friend's shirts. A large orb and two smaller ones. For weeks, I felt like I've been watched by something. Even when I talk about it now, I'm feeling like I'm reliving it. That strange dreamlike feeling and my throat is closing up. The Myrtle Plantation is one of the most haunted in Louisiana. I visited a number of them, but have never felt as scared as I have there. 
I have never shared this story before. This happened when I was 10 or 11. I was living with my mum and sister in a super old rural farmhouse, probably from the early 1900s in Northern California, the town of Loomis. It was a basic three bedroom, one bathroom house with a cellar and attic and lots of land for horses and fruit trees. So one hot summer day, when my sister, mother and I were all home, I was playing Warcraft 2 or something on my computer and started to hear extremely loud and violent banging on the wall. It was literally rattling on the windows. Being rather absorbed in my gameplay, I let it go until a few minutes had passed, at which point my confusion meter had reached its limits and I had to figure out what was causing it. Naturally, I assumed it was my sister, who was 16 at the time, and was being stupid, kicking the walls with both legs. That's how loud it sounded. But she wasn't. In fact, she assumed I was doing the same. It confused both of us, because it was even louder than we thought a person could kick the wall. It sounded like a freaking car ran into the house over and over for several hours. We grabbed our mum, who indicated she heard the same thing. None of us were doing it. We looked on the roof and in the attic, both of which were totally clear. The pipes, the plumbing, and the electrical had never made such violent noises before and were not causing them now. So we were totally at a loss as to what was making these horrible violent bangs. It shook the window panes and could be heard through the entire house. No way could it have been an earthquake because the floor wasn't shaking. We just heard such loud banging. Coincidentally, this was the same day a family friend's son had died. Although I don't know why that would have anything to do with it. Some other creepy stuff happened in the house, not on the same day, but throughout the three years that we lived there. I would feel a presence walk out of my mum's bedroom and through the living room behind me when I was there playing video games. My mum also dreamt that a brown smoke was trying to enter her abdomen. She was paralyzed and couldn't scream, but I heard her struggling through the wall. We had a weird shared closet with a door in between our rooms and woke her up. Another time I went down to the basement to look for something. I seem to remember I was checking on the kittens to which our cat had given birth to down there. And a strange black mist slowly covered my foot, promptly making me get the hell out of there. And I never returned. I'm guessing that this all had to do with the fact that my mum practiced witchcraft and was actually in a coven for years. But I'm not sure. We never determined the source. My dad also went on to die probably less than a year after this, and we were still living there. Perhaps it was a strange premonition. I would love to hear your thoughts. I should start this by saying I didn't used to believe in ghosts. I work in a building from the 1890s that I was told was once a brothel. Once I was working at night when no one else was there to get some extra work done. A lot of weird stuff happens on the second floor and a little after 3 a.m. I had to go up there and put some things away and lock up. The light switch is at the top of the stairs so I had to walk up the stairs in the dark. There were no windows in the hallway, so the only light was coming up from the bottom of the stairs. As I reached the top, I thought I saw a human figure walk across the hall, from one room to another, through two closed and locked doors, and fast, like a video sped up 50%. I was pretty freaked out, but skeptical. Maybe I just imagined it. The second floor of this building has always freaked me out at night. My co-worker too. So I turned on the light at the top of the stairs 
and walked down the hall to put some things away in the storeroom. While in the storeroom, a large machine part that had a flat bottom and was just sitting there on the table fell over while I had my back turned. It couldn't have just fallen over on its own or been knocked over by me. My heart started pounding and I said out loud, I'm sorry, I'm leaving now. I locked the storeroom and started walking quickly back down the hall. As I walked, a little gust of wind blew through the hallway from behind me. There were no doors or windows open to the outside anywhere in the building. And no one else was there to have opened one. So it wasn't the result of a natural pressure differential. I started speed walking. As I passed between the two doors where I had seen the fast moving apparition, I swear I heard a woman's voice whisper my name behind me. I turned off the light and stumbled quickly down the stairs. Halfway down, there's a small landing with a door. I fumbled with the latch that held the door open, terrified to look back up into the dark hallway above me. I got the door closed. And as I locked it, I felt sure that there was something on the other side. I was panicking. I clocked out of there as quickly as I could. And a few days later, I went up there before dawn on an opening shift. And I was talking to the ghost or whatever it was the whole time, apologizing for my intrusion and asking to be left alone. I felt crazy, but it was better than being haunted again. And everything was normal except I thought I felt someone lightly grasp the back of my shirt as I passed between the two doors. That was the last time I went up there alone in the dark. At one time, my parents owned the house my brother and sister-in-law now live in as a beach house. When I stayed there alone, the weirdest things would happen. Like odd noises coming from the kitchen in the middle of the night. If I was there with certain friends of mine, it would be a different story. There are two incidences that stick out in recent memory. The first one took place when we were sleeping on the futon in the living room, which we did because the only beds we were allowed to sleep on were extremely uncomfortable. So we just used them to hold our clothes and toiletries. I have extremely bad eyesight. So while watching TV that night, I was wearing my glasses. Then when I decided to go to sleep, I took them off and set them on the arm of the futon folded up so they would be handy in the morning. Well, that turned out not to be the case. I reached over to grab them and they were gone. I wanted to be sure I wasn't jumping to any conclusions. So I started looking in all the places they could logically be between the futon arm and mattress under the futon and under the bookcase in the bathroom, etc. But I couldn't find them. Annoyed but wanting to proceed with the day, I put on my contact lenses and Tracy walks into the bedroom where we all had our stuff and comes back saying, you've got to see this. After I followed her in there, she lifts up one of her shirts and lo and behold, there are my glasses underneath it, open and upside down as though someone had been wearing them. Now keep in mind, Tracy does also wear glasses but her prescription is widely different from mine. This means she would have noticed immediately if she had picked up mine by mistake. And even then, why would she have put them under her shirt? Neither of us ever had any history of sleepwalking. So I doubt it was something like that. Unless she confessed it herself. I refuse to entertain the notion this could have been a prank. The second incident is even more inexplicable. This time I was staying with Tracy and a guy I was dating at the time who we called Big John, since he was literally about seven feet tall. Tracy slept on one of the two tiny rock hard beds in the spare room. And John and I slept on the futon. Next morning, John and I were both awake, but not really moving or speaking yet. I felt him turn to look at the bookcase that was about three feet from the futon but he didn't move in a manner that would have allowed him to touch anything on it. After he looked away, a picture of my brother and dad fell off its shelf, 
where it was a couple of inches back from the edge, and fell to the floor when shattered. After my parents sold the house to my brother, his stepson would complain about things like his dresser drawers opening and shutting by themselves at night. My sister in law is not the type of person to allow something like that to scare her children. So she firmly told the entity that it was perfectly welcome to stay. But messing with the kids was not going to be tolerated. After that, things calmed down until they expanded the house. So my sister in law had to reiterate her original terms. I had a lot of weird paranormal stuff happen to me when I was growing up. When I was little, I lived in a three bedroom, one story house. Main area included kitchen and the living room with no type of partition between. Just wide open space for any area that wasn't going to a bedroom. As a kid, I used to stay up in the living room and watch cartoons or whatever. Whenever I would be out there alone, and only alone, I'd hear the sounds of pots and pans falling to the ground, and cups falling off the counter. Our pots and pans were neatly nestled in a cabinet, with no opportunity of falling, and cups were never left on the counter. As a kid, I didn't think much about it, but it's creepy as hell to think about now. On top of that, you could hear the sound of chains clanging outside the windows, but the only chains around were the swing set, hundreds of feet from the back porch. And that couldn't possibly be loud enough, even on a windy night. In the same house during the same period, my older brother got repeatedly terrorized at night by this shadow thing that he calls the Sandman. Basically, if the blinds were open in such a way that the porch light casts light into our room at night, he'd see this tall, gangly man in a nightcap, creeping across the room in the cartoonish, high kneed tiptoe. He never ever sleeps with the blinds open. You could chalk it up to having an overactive imagination, but it was a creepy house in all honesty. Then when I was in middle school, I went to dog sit with my brother for my mum's friend, who had a huge house in the boonies. It was absolutely massive. But when she gave us a quick tour of the house and where to find the dog food and stuff, she refused to show us the upstairs portion and strictly said that we were under no circumstances allowed upstairs. Whatever, we didn't really care. A few nights into our stay, my sister and her friend came over. Since we had a massive property to do outdoor stuff with, we decided to play manhunt when it got dark. My brother drew the short straw and had to search for us. This property had a ridiculously long driveway so we decided we could just walk to the end and lay down to hide. It worked pretty well, and we could see the whole front part of the property, including my brother running around searching for us. All of a sudden, all of the lights on the second floor of the house flicked on. We immediately decided to call it quits, and just huddled together in the living room for the night, feeling creeped out. That night, the dog we were watching went into the foyer as we tried to sleep, and just started howling up the stairs. A bit of context. I live in a one story house, with a bayou behind it. We have railings on our windows slash doors, because we've been broken into in the past. I've never really been afraid to stay home alone, until recently. I always, always, always felt something unworldly in our home. A long time ago, we had this scary incident. My younger sister and I shared a bedroom when we were kids. Our family was religious, so we had a cross in the wall between the two of our beds. 
We went to a party one day with our entire family, and stayed there for a few hours. I want to make it clear that everybody went to the party. My mom, dad, older sister, younger sister, younger brother and I all went. We came back home, and I saw that the cross that was hanging between our beds was missing. I check under the bed, and there it was under my sister's bed. To this day, I have no explanation for it. My parents were also shocked, but didn't think much. So we put it back on the wall, and nothing had happened to it since. That was my first real encounter with something strange. There were times where I'd lay in my bed playing with my DS, when the TV would all of a sudden turn on by itself. I had to stand up to turn it off, but it would continually turn itself on two or three times later. I wasn't sitting on a remote or anything. Everything just remained normal for a few years, but then things began picking up again. There was a time when my sister had her door knocked on and blamed me for doing it. I told her that I never touched her door, and things felt uneasy again. On another occasion, my door opened entirely by itself one day. All of the windows were closed, and only the AC was on. The door was slightly cracked, but I don't believe the AC would just open the door the entire way slowly by itself. This was a recent incident, perhaps a year ago, but it scared the life out of me. I was just alone in bed, browsing on Twitter when I heard this noise. I can promise anyone that it wasn't the Candy Crush game music, because I heard the crushing of candy leaves and the distinct yum from the game. The music was also really familiar, since I played it a lot in middle school. It sounded very clear and I knew it was real. It sounded as if someone was actively playing it. I was home alone, and it freaked me out. My dad was at work, my younger brother was at school, and my sister was walking home with a friend. Once I stood up to investigate the music, it stopped. The music skipped. My heart sank, goosebumps flooded my arms, and I bolted to my front door and stayed outside until my sister came home. I wish I had recorded the audio, because it would have made her believe me. This incident scared me incredibly. Now I'm sharing this, as other things keep happening. I'm home alone, and I keep hearing this toy go off. It sounds like an elephant toy with a honking sound and it's going off during random intervals. When I go to see what it is, nothing's there. I'm completely paranoid and freaking out at the moment. In my childhood home, I would often hear touch typing coming from the computer downstairs in the early mornings. I didn't think much of it at first. My parents worked from home and it wouldn't be uncommon for them to wake up in the morning and hear my mother typing away furiously at the computer. One day, I got up and called out to my mum, assuming she was down there working, as I could hear typing. No answer. No one was down there. I was sure I heard typing. This began happening regularly. I figured I was so used to hearing typing from downstairs, that I was hearing things that weren't there. So I didn't mention anything to anyone, figuring I was going a bit crazy. This happened on and off over a period of six months. The sound of fast typing, and fast, furious clicking of a mouse, as if someone was frustrated. One morning, I was eating my breakfast, when I heard my mum at the top of the stairs call out to me. You're not down on the computer already, are you? I froze and ran out to her. I was amazed she'd heard it too. She was convinced she could hear me typing. Yet, no one was down there. I told her about all the times I'd been hearing it, and then my sister opened up about hearing it regularly too, 
when no one was down there. It wasn't crazy at all. I set out to try and catch whatever was causing it, and try to discover a rational explanation for it. I'd sprint out of my bedroom to the top of the stairs where I was able to look down into the room to see if anyone was at the computer. No such luck. Every time I got there, it stopped. I think it went on for a couple of years, and we learned to just kind of live with it, as it wasn't every day. I was down there once again, when the ceiling light globe in the centre of the room began flashing very fast, strobe-like. It then exploded, and glass went shattering across the room. I was lucky I ran out of the room when it started happening, because I was scared. The whole mysterious type thing, you know. If I hadn't ran, I would have been hit with bits of light bulb. Around the same time, I was on the computer at home by myself, when something happened that resulted in me never being alone in that room again. I felt and heard this really sharp intake of breath directly behind my right ear. I've never run so fast in my life, and was hesitant going into that room ever again. Prior to that, the whole typing thing had just been something weird and a bit spooky. Not scary. It still makes my heart race when I think about it today. I've never really encountered anything like this before or since all of these events. I don't particularly believe in ghosts either. But I'm open to the possibility that there are things in science that we don't have a proper explanation for yet. There was a brief period of time where me and my younger sister shared a room with bunk beds. This isn't overly important, though it does kind of come into play later. I'd say it was about 11pm, and we were just on our phones and stuff on social media, YouTube and everything, and I always thought my house was haunted. I've had quite a few experiences in it, you see, but this pretty much confirmed it. So we were lying there, and all of a sudden, we heard really loud static. It sounded like a record slash vinyl player that's not playing correctly. Really weird and distorted almost. Now my dad does have a record player, but it's not been used in years and is under a pile of books and clothes. It's also in his room, which is at the other end of the upstairs hallway, and this static sound seemed to be coming from the room that we were in. It was that loud. This is the part that seems fake, and I totally understand if you think it is. We heard a really deep, guttural male laugh. That also seemed to be coming from within the room. We were the only two people there. Again, a possible explanation could be that my dad was laughing. However, he was downstairs at this point, as both my parents like movies, and most nights will watch one and go to bed relatively late. And this laugh was much deeper than I've ever known his to be. It creeped me out. Safe to say I didn't sleep that night, also, this may have nothing to do with that, but I'll mention it anyway. Since this incident, me and my sister's memories of it have changed, but only minorly. Such as I remember being on the top bunk, and her being on the bottom. Whereas, she swears she was at the top and I was at the bottom. This was about two years ago now, and obviously forgetting as easy as hell, but it weirds me out big time. My sister, more or less, now leaves that room, even if I bring it up. Given that I moved into my own room shortly after this happened, and the room it happened in, is now her own. Christmas Day, mid-90s. I was about six years old. The house we lived in had a conservatory, which we used for family dinners. That Christmas, there was my parents and grandmother present. I was pretty young, so basically remember nothing else from that day 
apart from the event that followed up, both of which are crystal clear in my memory. Dinner's ready, the TV gets turned off, and we all head to the dining table to start eating. Then we hear a deep gargling sound coming from the adjoining lounge. It sounds like a mix of choking, gargling water in the throat, and the way a singer sounds when a song is reversed. It was pretty disturbing. Everything goes silent. We all freeze and glance at each other, then start to try and locate the source of such a noise. We look around basically as the whole house is eliminating everything we could possibly think of as a potential source. As far as I remember, we eventually shrugged off the event and carried on with the day as normal. Now, the follow up was sometime later. It was probably springtime. My dad likes his gardening, and about three quarters of the garden were pristine. The very bottom, however, was my patch, and I could do whatever I wanted down there. I dug a hole, a big hole, that was perhaps two feet deep. I say a 12 foot wide hole when I found a set of top front teeth which appeared to be set into pinkish stone. They were definitely for a human, and we didn't really investigate this much, as it was more curious. This wasn't the only incident at that house that was odd. Many years later, we found out that about 60 years prior, there was a stream at the bottom of the garden. While I've always had a keen sense of skepticism, my mother was convinced that the house was haunted, and later that the spirits had followed us to our new house. We had a few instances of banging and scratching from the attic, although in hindsight I'm pretty sure that was something to do with a heating system. The oddest experience was not necessarily that scary, but I was running up a really high fever one night. I was in bed and hallucinating all kinds of stuff, massive spiders crawling up into bed with me and things like that. My room was painted, but had a wallpaper border near the ceiling, and one of my hallucinations was of my uncle, an avid biker, riding along it. I started shouting his name at the top of my voice and getting really upset, and he died in a motorbike accident about a month later. My friend Janice and I were at our other friend Gemma's apartment. As we are hanging out, Gemma proceeds to tell me and Janice about some weird shit that had been going on in her apartment. She said at night she heard footsteps, as though someone was walking around in her living room. But when she got up to check, there was no one there. She told us that sometimes things would not be where she'd left them, like they had been moved and she knew she hadn't done it. She said she heard voices at times, and she shouldn't have been able to hear the neighbours, or anyone, such as when she was in the shower. Now Gemma had moved in by herself, because her boyfriend had obligations in our hometown for a few months, and wouldn't be able to relocate for another couple of weeks. So Gemma was in a new place all by herself for the first time, and that, coupled with the copious amounts of bud she smoked, made me think that she was tripping out and paranoid or something. Janice and I are trying to calm her down because she's getting kind of upset and desperate for us to believe her. And I'm in the process of telling her every rational explanation I come up with. Thin walls, she's hearing the neighbors come home late and her imagination. And then, the craziest shit happens, that to this day, nine years later, I can't explain. The couch we are sitting on is at least seven feet from the entertainment center slash bookshelf that is directly across from us and attached to a wall. The box on the shelf are tightly packed side to side with no gaps or loose sections. There are no open doors or windows so no wind in the apartment, but yet despite all of this, a notebook, your typical college ruled spiral bound notebook, comes flipping out end over end 
and lands halfway in between us and the shelf it launched itself from. Gemma, Janice and myself are all silent. We look at the notebook and then each other. Then the notebook. That thing flew. It didn't simply fall off the shelf, which would have been weird and unexplainable in itself. It launched on an upward and outward trajectory, like it had been flung. None of us really had anything to say. Janice and myself now had to admit that maybe Gemma had been experiencing some weird shit. And I had to seriously reevaluate a lot of my understanding of how shit works. I lived in four creepy and haunted houses. They all had some pretty horrifying things, but the third one was the scariest. I was in high school when me, my mum and stepdad lived there. I moved in with them when I was 15. My mum had married him a few months before. Anyway, one night, I noticed the doorknob on my bedroom door was shaking like horribly shaking. It was locked though. I thought maybe it was like a train, but it kept happening. I thought that maybe it was my stepdad being a creep. I didn't know him very well at that point. So I started leaving it unlocked to try and see if it was him trying to get in. It would still just shake. Then it happened day, night, any time I shut the door. Sometimes I would get up at night to get a snack, since I have had a hard time sleeping since I was a kid. I'd hear footsteps behind me, or the floor creaking. It was a really small house too, and no one else was up. There's not anywhere to hide. I'd feel my shirt tugged sometimes too, just at the bottom of it, like a little kid would do when they want attention. The scariest two things uh, one morning, it was winter and around 6am or so, so still dark outside, and I was in the living room watching TV and getting ready for school. My stepdad was in the back of the house in his room sleeping, and my mum was heading out the front door to work, and she turned around and said bye to me. And we hear this little girl's voice clear as day say, Goodbye. My mum looked at me and I screamed, and her husband comes running up, asking what happened. And my mum told him, and then was like, well, note to this, bye, and left. Then, the last scary thing was that our neighbour, whose backyard connected to ours, but they lived around the corner, came over to yell at my mum one day, saying that she's a crappy mum for letting our little sister out all night and play on the swing. We had a rope tied to a tree that no one ever used, and my youngest sister lived in another town with my dad, and so my mum was really confused. The neighbour said she would go out for a smoke at night and would see a little girl swinging on the rope and laughing, and she'd see it multiple times when she went out. My aunt works at the city and did research, saying that our house had been moved from another location. It was really old. I don't know if either of these attributed to the little girl, or what. I live in a very old house, and I have lived here since I was four. I'm 22 now. A lot of strange occurrences have happened here. The main one being that I woke up in the very early hours of the morning, to see a young boy messing about with the sink that I had in my room at the time. He wasn't looking at me. He seemed almost not there, but I could see him. When I managed to pluck up the courage to go and see my parents, I left him in my room. My parents were very understanding. Turns out years later, when they told my sister and me, we had quite a few spirits in the house. And I described this lad to them, as they had seen him and knew I wasn't making it up. There was always singing in the house too, Never an actual source, just humming and singing floating around. My sister and mother and I had things go missing, turned up in a room, and on return, her diary, which had gone missing a few days earlier, 
was just sitting on the middle of the floor despite not being there many moments ago. A lot of this I was too young to understand. But when my parents sat us down and told me everything, it scared the crap out of me for a good while. We still have random unexplained things happen to us, but we can just talk about it and wonder who or what it could be. A few years back, I was living with my boyfriend and his sister in a cottage built before the Civil War. We had a few strange things happen over the span of about a year and a half that we were there. At first, I thought they were both messing with me. They'd mention things falling over at random, little things that I didn't think much about. Then I started noticing things that I could not explain. Our small kitchen was by the back door, and we had a countertop with our cutlery in a drawer that, when opened, would block most of the entrance into the kitchen. It was one of these drawers that closed magnetically and didn't have a handle or knob. We would go back outside to smoke, and when we came back in, the cutlery drawer would be completely open, blocking the entrance. It couldn't have snagged on someone's clothing, as it had to be pulled out quite firmly to open because of the magnets. I still didn't think much of it, and things continued to escalate. One evening, my boyfriend and I were out, and his sister called us to tell us that the cat food container, which was probably around 10 to 15 pounds when full, and stacked on top of another larger container, somehow toppled over while she and all the animals were in her room. Next, the bathtub filled itself up one morning. We would be sitting on the sofa watching TV, and a ball would suddenly roll across the floor from under a bed or in a corner, and the dogs would start playing with it and staring at certain spots in the room, as if someone was standing there. Then one night, I woke up to adjust the thermostat, which was directly across a small hallway from my bathroom. I glanced over, because someone was on the toilet with the lights out and the door open. I apologised, assuming it was my boyfriend's sister, when I realised this girl was much more petite and looked nothing like her. I glanced back and no one was there. I wasn't very sleepy or incoherent, because the heat had been keeping me up, so I do believe I actually saw someone. Regardless, she seemed to be friendly and played with our dogs. About eight to ten years ago, my family moved into a small house in Beech Grove, Indiana. It was a two-story house with a basement. Our basement was used as a playroom for me and my two siblings. It was shaped in an odd way, almost like a horseshoe. It had a divider wall running horizontally down the basement. One side was a playroom and the other had our washer, dryer, and storage space. This storage space was creepy as hell, and no one liked going back there. It was straight out of a horror movie, dark, with only a single light bulb in the center of the room, that had a pull string dangling, and worn colors on the walls. The best part is that on the other side of the thin divider wall, was the kids' playroom. Anyway, one day my dad gets kidney stones, and at around 9pm or so, he decides he needs to go to the hospital. My mum asks if I wanted to come along with them and my siblings, and I say no, because I'm really into the racing video game scene that I'm playing. So I'm playing my game without a care in the world, and I finish up a race close and whistled to myself as if to say, Phew, that was a close race. Then I hear it. My whistle responded back to me from the other side of the divider wall. At first I thought it was just an echo, so I whistled something more complicated. Almost immediately it whistled back. I kept whistling, 
and heard mimic responses for a solid two minutes. I finally got freaked out and ran upstairs and locked myself in the bathroom. When they finally got home and found me locked in the bathroom crying and freaked out, they believed me when I told them. They tell me dad has always felt uneasy in their house, but didn't want to say anything to not scare us kids. There was nothing that could be done, so we all went our separate ways to bed. Later that same night, my mother was awoken by my dad swaying his leg back and forth moving the bed. She looked at him and asked why he was doing it. He said he couldn't help that, and that they were rocking the bed. She asked who they were, and he told her, The people around our bed. Don't you see them? She didn't see anything. Needless to say, we do not live there anymore. My ex-girlfriend who was also now my baby mama, and myself were desperately looking for a place to live. This was before she got pregnant. We came across a for rent sign. I called the number, left a message, and an elderly lady called me back. We went to the lady's home and it was a duplex. The house attached to hers being the one she was renting. She did no background checks or anything and immediately accepted us. I called my cousin to have the second room as it was a two bedroom, and we moved in a week before him. Day one. I went to work and she wasn't responding to me all night. So I returned home to find her doing her makeup and saying all of the charger ports are broken in this place and that she can't charge her phone. She mentions that she thinks the place is haunted and I laugh at her in disbelief. Day two. She went to work, and I had major sleep paralysis, and watched my door partially close itself. I went to sleep, and woke up to it being completely closed. I believe her at this point, but we had already moved in, and I warned my cousin who laughed at us. It took him about a week to come, and say, I believe you, but I'm not scared. We eventually stopped being bothered by the supposed ghost, but any time I mentioned to a friend spending the night, they'd laugh in disbelief, and the ghost would do something, like knock something over in the middle of the night, just to prove itself, and they would become believers. One night, we were all drinking in the living room, and kept hearing, that was easy, in the kitchen, randomly, for about an hour every 10 minutes. We discovered that a that was easy button was under the oven that never went off until that particular night. This was about a year after living there. It never hurt anyone, but would occasionally knock something over just to remind us of its existence. Very harmless. We lived there two years before being evicted for partying too much. Pretty much Anyone at my parties who stayed the night would mention some type of interaction with the spirit. Last year, I was cycling in Tuscany on holiday. I knew the guy who ran it, as it was my coach who also runs a national race team. We're a close knit bunch on the holiday as most people know each other from riding together back home. Later in our trip, the coach is talking about something strange that happened to him the night before. I didn't hear him at the time, as I was using the climbs as training and pushing on. We stop for lunch, and he starts talking about his experience, and I ask him what he's talking about. He goes on to explain that he was asleep. And then all of a sudden he starts hearing talking, but just a little bit, as he thinks that it's very weird, as he's alone in that part of the villa, as it's a massive place that's been split into apartments. And he sits up, and then gets pushed back down. In the morning he calls his wife back home, and she said she'd felt something when she was out there with him earlier that week like she was being watched. 
Now on hearing this, I started mocking him. And back at the villa, I carry it on. So two nights later, it's still a topic for jokes. We go to bed, and I crash. Then at 2am I wake up, and can't sleep. So I just lay there. Then I hear talking, and think that it's my mate in the room next door, who I'm sharing the apartment with, just talking to his wife back home in England. So I think nothing of it. About 30 minutes later, I'm tossing and turning, when out of nowhere I feel like my head is being pushed into the pillow and someone is holding my shoulder down as well. I was freaking out. It stops seconds later, but feels longer, and as it stops, I hear a laugh, and I didn't sleep again that night. I told him in the morning what happened, and he thought I was winding him up. We've since found out that the villa has a history of things happening. Also, his apartment and mine are joined by a door, the rest are completely separate. We're back there again next month. I won't be mocking anyone though, as I don't want karma to take effect. I fully believe my old house was haunted. It used to belong to my aunt's husband, whose family had lived in the same town for generations. The house was built sometime in the 1800s, it was actually pretty cool initially. Anyway, my mother used to be the principal of my high school, and so she would have to stay late all the time for basketball games and events and such, and I would have the whole house to myself. I would hear thumps and things moving, footsteps and noises upstairs almost every night, and my dog would absolutely lose her shit and refuse to go into certain rooms. Her fur would stand on end and she would bark like crazy. Mind you, she was old as hell and very passive. I never heard her bark even at a human before. The radios would turn on constantly while I was home alone. Once I was upstairs, and it flipped on, blaring. It scared the shit out of me. So I yanked the cord out of the wall and ran downstairs, only for the radio in the kitchen to turn on full blast as I came in. I had to tell my mum, please stop unplugging my hair dryer, every morning, and she would staunchly stick by her claim that she hadn't even touched it. Finally, one weekend, my father came to visit, as my parents are divorced, and he slept downstairs in the spare room, where we had a couch and a big plush chair, plus a table and antique banjo up against the wall. I got freaked out in my own room. So one night I decided to go doze in my chair near my dad. I finally fell into a light sleep. My dad woke up as well, and he even asked me, Did you hear that? It was never anything as scary as some of the other stories, but I could never explain anything that happened at that house. In the house where I grew up, a few weird things happened. The first is that sometimes when I'd arrived from school and was home alone, I'd hear flute music. It was definitely not coming from one of the neighbors. First, I wouldn't hear it. Second, I didn't know or play any instrument. It used to spook me a bit. So I'd just go outside and play hockey until my mother and father came home. As the years went by, I thought nothing of it. Until about five or six years, when talking to my sister about the house, she's ten years older than me. And she told me, remember the house being creepy? I asked her why, and she told me that every now and then when she was alone, she would hear a flute melody. Ah, fun times. The second thing was when I'd go to my upstairs bedroom in that same house. The way it was made was just a stairway doing a U, leading to the small hallway about 12 feet. On the right side, it was my parents' bedroom, and on the left, mine. Now that I explained the layout, you know how sometimes you go to open the light and it instantly dies? 
So it basically just flashes on and immediately turns off. Yeah. So when I went upstairs and opened the light, that would happen. In that brief moment when the light flashed, I swear I could see a figure sitting on the edge of my parents' bed facing the wall. It happened exactly four times in the 12 years I lived there. Plus, we moved my bedroom downstairs when I was eight because my sister was moving out for college. The fourth time it happened, I was 11. And that time the figure was standing by the bed facing me. My parents divorced a year later and we moved out. Now, for what's concerning the flute melody, I have no idea what that could have been. In regards to the shape, I saw when the light flashed. I'm pretty sure it was an optical illusion due to the flash messing with my eyes. But still, it was creepy as hell. My dad grew up in a house that had some very weird things happening to him and other members of his family back in the late 70s and early 80s. One day, my dad came home from school and said that someone came running up the basement stairs and pounded on the door. He was the only one home that day, so he ran outside and waited for my grandparents to come home. On another occasion, my dad came home and went into the living room to turn on the TV. Once again, home alone. When he went to turn it on, he saw the reflection of a man standing back behind him. When he turned around, no one was there. He said that sometimes his dog would start growling at his bedroom door, off and on, as if someone was standing outside of it. My aunt had a strange experience once with a boyfriend at the time. One day they came home and went to go inside. When they saw a woman that they figured was my grandmother in the front window of the house. As they approached, she walked away. So they waited at the front door for a few minutes, thinking she was about to let them in. When no one came, she let herself in. My grandmother was in the kitchen, and that's when she realized the woman was wearing red, and my grandmother was not. One morning, a freshly made cup of coffee was sitting on the kitchen counter for my grandfather. No one knew how it was made, and my grandmother swears up and down that she never made it. Cabinets would open and shut, toilets would flush. Dad said a figure would stand in his doorway at times. Thinking it was grandpa, he would say, Dad? To which the figure would just walk away. There were so many weird things that happened in that house.